Okay, can you guys hear sound now? Yeah? Oh man, my mic was off then. I was talking to you guys all this time and my mic was off. <laughs> all right, so let, let's just take it from the top, right? So welcome everybody, uh, Fatiha, Brandon, Orlando, Diane, Jessica, TJ, Dylan. Who else is in the house? Gordon, what's up Gordon? How are you guys doing today? What's up, Kyle, Mike, David, Marcos? Same folks around here. Good. Everybody's having a good weekend. That's awesome. All right. You too, Jessica. Nice. Tomorrow is a big day, Brandon, for sure. For sure. Um, what are you guys trading? What are you guys looking at right now? In the meantime, while Mark gets settled, then let me know. Let's have a little gossip session here. What are you guys looking at? <laughs> mttr matterport yeah big on that roblox lucid apple microsoft boeing what else do we have there what else are you guys trading let's see well you guys are typing fast today man like i i need some time to read guys all i see is amd amc <laughs> mm. 
Microvision, Mona, welcome if you're new, Crypto, Pfizer, Wow, I miss a lot of chats at the top. <laughs> Tesla, yes. Neo, okay, all right, all right. Do you love Neo? Jessica, are you like long on Neo or, or are you just trading it? Just curious. Mona, yeah, you're going to learn a lot here. You're going to learn. Once Mark Petrino gets in the house, session will begin. Uh, right now, it's like right before we start. Um, anyone catch DocuSign Dump? I don't know. Did anybody here catch DocuSign Dump? Marvel, Dylan, that Marvel technology is an amazing company, dude. Um, really bullish on that one. Did anyone catch DocuDump holding calls? Jessica, you're holding calls on Neo? DHR, yeah, DHR, that's a safe one. That's a safe one, brand, Brad. Uh, Diane, Chinese stock scare me. Yeah, they scare me too. Absolutely. I've never even wanted to touch them. But I, I don't know if Neo's going to, uh, I don't know if uh, Neo's, not, I don't think Neo's going to get delisted. I think DD is, like they're in the process of that. But I don't know. I don't think Neo is doing that. Diane, OMG, got buys on gold. Okay, yeah, I mean gold. Gold's pretty safe. Wishy pots, wish, <laughs> wishy butt puts on docu. Yeah, I mean everybody, dude. A lot of that's a lot of life savings just wiped away, man, in like a day. Um, it's the big. It was a big dump. It's called the docu dump. Quinton just sat back and watched it burn. Yeah, that feels a little good sometimes. <laughs> What's the best stocks to grab tomorrow? Bobby, we're going to figure that out today. We're going to be talking about the markets. We're going to doing we're going to be doing a lot of things today. It's going to be a special session just for you guys. Um DocuSign was crazy, of course, dude. I mean, that was insane, Diane. Terrible for anyone long. Yeah, I mean, you got to hold or just, you know, get out it's a pretty big dump though. You're bullish on Baba Kath Kaluth. I'm afraid of these of those stocks, to be honest. Um I'd rather buy Jemaya, the Amazon of Africa, as they call it, <laughs> than to buy Baba. Um LMT, what's LMT, Quentin? Sean says, hi, I'm a doctor and I'm interested in crypto. <laughs> yeah, we all we all like a little crypto. This is not all about crypto, though. But what, what Mark Petrino like teaches and stuff in the trading school, it is like applicable to crypto. Like you can apply it to literally everything. You can apply it to options. You can apply it to like um, commodities, Forex, options, that, you know, that kind of stuff. Autodesk, yeah. I mean, Autodesk, I'm, I'm pretty bullish on Autodesk, Majid. Um, it's definitely part of the metaverse as well. Uh, and it's a big company. It's a large cap, if I'm not mistaken. That's a very big one. DWAC, um, I mean, Twitter's falling. I don't know. DWAC could have, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's potential. I know Funware went up as well, but it didn't hold up as much as DWAC did. And uh, I think that's because there's another uh, IPO coming out. That's related to the whole, you know, squad, D walk squad. <laughs> um, crypto's not better than DocuSign. Yeah, Orlando, I agree. I mean, DocuSign is, but you know, crypto, man, look at Cardano, look at all those charts, man. They've all been, it's like there's bull markets and bear markets in, in, in crypto. You know, that's what I hear. Um, That's what I hear about. I, don't, I mean, from what I'm seeing as well on the charts, you know, like if you look at all these coins, they'll have like an insane rip to the upside. And then they'll have like just a long bleeding downwards. Um, you, you know, you got to time that well. Can you be my personal mentor? No, man. I mean, Mark Petrino can. Um, but I mean, we all have a big community here. People that, you know, trade together and...
and we work together as a community. Like, to be honest, the community here in Benzinga is, is so awesome. Look at all you guys. Like, um, <laughs> uh, Brandon, the, um, yeah, so like the recordings are available to like the, to the members. But I mean, you can watch it live here and stuff. Jemiah is super cheap right now, but growth stock's not good right now. Lumen inflation going to keep crushing those stocks. Diane, I agree with you. I agree. Very smart. Um, that's definitely what's happening. You can see growth is just getting destroyed. And the, from what I understand, um, from what I understand, these uh, there's going to be a incre uh, rate increase, and it could be up to three or four per year to combat inflation. So because now, so the Fed removed the word transitory from um from whatever they're they were calling it before right you know they were like uh this is transitory and 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 they loved using that word and now they officially removed the word transitory from their reports and things because you know like you can't blatantly lie and pretend there's no inflation you know after so long after everybody told them Dude, this is there's no such thing as transitory inflation. Like this thing, <laughs> you're pumping money so hard. And then now, you know, now that the inflation is there, they have to increase the rates. So if you increase rates too fast, too quick, it could stunt the economy, the growth of the economy. And, you know, that's not going to be that good for many stocks, obviously. And some people are saying that that could tip the com the economy into, into a recession if you do, you know, because that's what's happened before, just going by precedent. But uh, it, it's a wild, wild west right now, to be honest. No one knows what's going to happen. Um, but that's surprising. You know, they're not like Powell's not calling it transitory anymore. So, so it's not transitory. So, <laughs> yeah, Diane, you have to plan accordingly. But none of these things are set in stone. You know, like there's no magic rule that, that if the Fed increases the rates, inflation will go down. Let's say, what if it's out of their control? What if it's so bad that like they can't do anything? You know, it's like we, we you can't always take like the yields for granted that they're going to move this, you know, in that correlation with stocks. Many times they do, but, you know, you can't like just bet the house on it. Uh, Kath Luna, what, you buying Pizza Hut? Uh, Sharon, is Lithium America lack LAC good? Yeah, I think it's a good stock. It's like a mining, right, for Lithium? Yeah. Yeah, Travis, so um, you're going to learn like the basics, fundamentals with Mark as far as like if you want to trade Forex. Yeah, that's there's a lot of Forex traders in there as well. And you can trade Forex and stocks like they're related. You can take one from another, you know, like the good Forex traders. They, they're aware of the economy and stuff like that. They're not just looking at the chart. They're looking at other stuff that is market related, right? Because the markets impact the currency and, and so forth. Yeah, Diane, absolutely. Higher rates and those stocks get hammered. Uh, and then the DocuSign thing that dropped all the other stocks. I mean, this could be an insane buying opportunity. Uh, I think it could be an insane. I already have some names selected. Um, could be a good time to get started on a long-term portfolio, maybe. Coupa, yeah, Siri. So Coupa could turn everything around, but who knows? Maybe it's not big enough to turn anything around. Yeah, Travis, Mark, that's right. Uh, David, um, yeah, we're live here right now. Yeah, and we're just having a little bit of you know issues here, waiting here on, on, uh, on Mark. I think it's some technical issues, but that's getting resolved, guys. In the meantime, go ahead and shoot whatever you got here. <laughs> okay. Bobby, if I start with 30K, how much should I make daily? I don't know. That's a personal question. Um, it, you can, it depends what you do and how much money you put in and, and your limits, your risk reward ratio. It's a pretty loaded question. Um, I don't think anybody could actually answer that accurately though. But, um, any thoughts on AMC? As long as, you know, the apes keep holding, I don't, I don't, it's a community, dude. Like it's a, it's a global community. It's a global community. So I don't think it's ever going to go away. 
could go higher. Who knows? I mean, as long as people hold, <laughs> like, and, and, and other people keep buying in, it should go up, right? That's just the basic fundamental side of it. I did trade AMC though. I, I was trading it with calls. Once it hit that like $30, every time I hit that $30 level, I would buy calls and just sell them on the rip. NFTs. Good. I don't know enough about NFTs, Bonnie. I mean, I've seen some good things. I've seen some bad things, just like everything else, you know, because it's so new. Like, you know, some people get scammed, but other people, you know, make a lot of money. If I don't understand it, I'm not going to get in it. Uh, what do you think about Microvision? That's a good stock. Um, it's like LiDAR technology, something like that. Lucid. Lucid is moving with the Tesla chart. Go ahead and look at it. If you buy Lucid, it's like you're buying Tesla pretty much. Tesla ripped, Lucid ripped. Um, so, I mean, you can buy whichever one. You can buy Lucid or Tesla. I don't care. They're both moving the same way. Uh, very, very similar. Right, Eve? Yeah, you can lose 30K in a day as well, right? You can... <laughs> Any thoughts on Rivian? Yeah, Rivian, I mean, it's very... It's very new. It's only been trading for like a week or two. And it was even valued higher than Tesla, I think, without a car coming out. I don't know. Valuations are pretty crazy in that space. Wink coin. I don't know anything about these these uh, random coins, Arafat. Thoughts on Upstart? I don't know too much about it. XSPA, that's that. Man, I've been hearing about that stock since I started trading a lot, like years ago, man. It's like the te COVID testing, and, and they can actually test for like the Omicron variant, Kyle. Is that right? I think I saw a PR from them saying that. Yeah, M MVIS is not a bad stock. I know portfolio managers that love it and hold it and trade it. Nicola, man. Babu, come on, man. Why are you asking me that? What do I think about Nicola? Come on. <laughs> you, oh, man. Definitely not bullish, man. Like, that should be delisted, in my opinion. Any thoughts on Outlook Therapeutics? I have no idea. No. CWBR. Uh, I don't know what that stock is. Dogecoin. Same thing as AMC, bro. If you guys keep holding and other people buy it's going to have to go up. Right. It's that simple, but you got to remember like Dogecoin is a meme. Like it's a meme, you know, there's really, it's very hard to get fundamentals on crypto. There's no earnings. You know, it's like, it, it's pretty much speculation driven specu It's just obviously pure speculative play. You call it currency, whatever, but like, just, you know, just like currency, right. You're just speculating. It's going to be worth something. No actual fundamental like thing to it doesn't mean you can't make money with it doesn't mean you can't trade it but you know <laughs> Kyle yeah so they have a pilot program XSPA with the CDC yeah and I mean I don't know why it's still a dollar bro I mean that thing definitely should push up higher if they got so much things going on I think it was heavily shorted I think there was like a short report on it if I'm not mistaken a while back ago Quentin says, Nicola put a bad taste in my mouth last year. All the deception. Yeah, dude. The guy was blocking people on Twitter um, that gave, asked him a hard question. It was just very sketchy from the get-go. And the guy one day said, I beat Elon Musk at his own game. And, bro, that's delusional. Uh, the guy's delusional. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jessica, right? UPST. UPST had a huge rip. Um, Upstart has a lending platform. Yeah, I think that those guys send me mails all the time. Um, are those for, are those, those are personal loans? The Upstart you're talking about, Alphonse? Rest in peace, Doge. Who knows, man? Crypto took a beating recently. PayPal, dude, PayPal is getting hammered. I don't know what's happening with PayPal. No one knows what's happening with PayPal. No one can tell you why it's dropping so bad. These were pandemic winners, right? You know, so... 
Uber, Uber rides. I don't know. Uber doesn't really catch my eye. Seems like a boring company. I don't think they're, I don't know. It's the chart is just not that appealing to me. <laughs> no one beats Elon Quentin. That's, that's, I mean, that guy was on something else, dude. It's like Elizabeth Holmes. He literally said a quote that Elizabeth Holmes said like straight up. And yeah. So. Kyle, so XSPA was okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like they got a lot of things cooking. Um, they need to execute. Um, I'm right. here. So, all right, guys. So we have a little uh, special surprise here for you guys. All right. As always, Nick just so you know, special. <laughs> rolls in, right? Um, everybody, go ahead. Give a warm welcome here to Mr. Nick Shaheen today, guys. Hey. Go ahead. All right. So I was just um, offered this opportunity to hop on and yeah. I love it. Nick, We're going to make, yes. Really quick before yeah. anything. All right. Yeah. Because yeah. you cut me off guard here, man. Um, <laughs> let's do something for those that don't know you, right? For yeah. those that are not familiar with you and, and what you do here as, you know, the chief options um, educator at the options inner circle, Ooh, give I us like a brief. That. Give us a, a brief background here of what you do, what you've been doing, how you got into options, just so people get familiar with you. And then we can, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. So um, I am not a Wall Street guy. So you won't hear me use the typical terms that options people use uh, or chartists. I'm a former engineer and uh, got into uh, business and finance. And then decades ago, I decided that I don't want to do anything else. So did my own thing investing using regular stocks and then i discovered options by mistake one of my friends had a margin call and i said what did you do he said something about calls and he couldn't explain them to me so i got into looking into them about i don't know 2011 i met benzinga team and we've been working together since i love the company i love what they stand for and the the better part of my day like all day, like including a 24 hour period, probably 80% of it is dedicated to helping the traders uh, like like you. Somebody who, who's a home gamer and is uh, getting beat up by Wall Street. And my whole thing is trying to simplify things and tell you how logic, reason, a few simple rules, you can beat Wall Street and turn off the news. Get the news headlines from the Benzinga Pro, <laughs> but don't take the opinions that come with the headlines because they're not, mm -hmm. they don't have your best interest at heart. Yes. And this is just the options, uh, inner circle chat room, Nick. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. So, and, um, all right. So that's great. That's great. And I know a lot of people already know you, you're all about the little guy. Benzing is all about the little guy, you know, that that's what we're here for. So, I mean, that's why everything clicks so well here. I'd say Nick, but, Give I us see some people. I see. I see at least Kyle mentioned. Uh, so they they followed me on social media, and they probably know. <laughs> yeah, my personality just from that. So um, I, I I expect to contribute well, and we're going to take it whichever direction you tell me. So I came in blind to what they're expecting. Yeah. Technical analysis, intraday scalps, longer swings. We can do right. any and all. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I mean, number one, right? Number one, because I always want to get your your intake, like your macro, right? So. Um, every it's been a while since you and I have like chopped chopped it up, Nick. So tell me where you're at right now with the market, um, with rates and all that stuff, because I know you keep a close eye on on everything that you know that related because you trade the TLT and all that stuff. What are you, what is your overall market overview considering everything up to this day where you're at now? Okay, so this is a conversation that this chart in front of me. I was in the chat room chatting with somebody about. Oh, it. share the screen by the way. If oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry about that. I was like, okay, we'll share. You don't want to look at my face. You want to look at my screen way better. Okay. So this is the screen. Hopefully you can see it by now. Um, so what you're looking at is the NASDAQ future. So basically think the NDX, QQQ, they should look the same. Uh, so the conversation was somebody that knows harmonics was trading a, a drawing a harmonic pattern. And they said, is that point D valid? And the point D they were pointing at was somewhere here. So if you don't know what a point D is, it's the end of a pattern that draws, that harmonics experts can draw. They have very specific rules, set of rules. 
And uh, it's basically the opposite of this red thing you see here. So it's drawing itself looking like, like an M type of a deal and the tail end of the M down here. So that point is somewhere down here. So the technical part is saying that we've had a trigger, trigger here from some sort of a head and shoulders that triggered level wise off of this, but trend wise somewhere higher like here. And the target of which is drawing close, which using logic, you look left, you see a little consolidation zone, you see a prior fail, you see a longer consolidation zone. So that area in the NASDAQ, oh, and you see the volume profile highest node right there, that orange line. So we are at the tail end of a technical breakdown that could finish drawing a bullish pattern. That point D they're talking about, once confirmed, the machines will chase the Fibonacci ratio is higher from a, I am not an expert in harmonics trading, but that's what they do. So they find a shape, they have many of them, and th that looks like an M, like the opposite of this red thing. And the, the tail end of it, once it draws and confirms, it's not that simple, but it's the spirit of it. Then you look for the bounce and you chase those Fibonacci's. So um, technicals, should be a huge part of your trading, especially if you're an investor and a trader. I get it that people say I'm in it for the long term, short term, it doesn't matter. But I don't get it when somebody decides to buy an area into a, a good stock that may succeed long term. But why would you get into it in the place where there is a high chance of you being the last person in for a long time? Um, so I just got finished a charting session with my gang, and um, this was the end result of it. A list of 129 tickers that I reviewed, 30, 129, that I reviewed live in a chat, which that's why I was sitting at my desk when I got the call, because I was just still writing this up and sharing the video and the table with links that they can click on of all the charts reviewed, and the actual video for the two hours for somebody that wants to watch it. So there are a lot of these opportunities. So in order for this market to correct hard from here, a lot of bad things have to happen. And I don't think they're still in the headlines yet. So the new thing, the, the things in the headlines we know. So I have to rely on the technicals and the logic and not chase stocks where I shouldn't, even good stocks. Like somebody said, what about Microsoft? Yeah, I love it, but not up here. Uh, as a trade, sure. As an investment, no. So that type of thing. So you have to be like a blend of everything. Yeah, and I do notice that whenever you do, um, well, I mean, I've been you know going over your trades and stuff like that for about over a year, Nick. Um, I personally have learned as an options trader a lot from a couple of things I'd say. Number one would be, the technical analysis and the digestion of news whenever yeah. news comes out the approach that you take and yeah. also the 20 years that you've seen this already you know like so you've been there I, i'm glad you mentioned so folks if you if think about last week it was a painful week correct it was a hard week it was a disappointing friday but in the morning when we had the jobs report the morning note to my people in the chat room i posted a, like a pre-trade like a before the market opens, I went into the chat room and I said, are we still on? Okay. I kind of lost him, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're, you're good. Oh, okay. Uh, your, your picture went away. Anyway, so in the morning before the market opens, I usually share my trade sheet, basically all the indices and the futures and the blurb as to what I think is going to happen. And I said, the reaction to the jobs report was absolutely wrong. It was a very bearish report for stocks. And everybody had it wrong. I said, I don't know what they're spiking for. Uh, book your profits. We were long overnight. I said, those longs I took overnight, I sold the put spread in the SPX and I closed it at the open. I paid 70 cents to close it, but I had collected $2.20 to open, 25 cents to open it. So I made money. In fact, it was an iron condor, so I made a little more. But uh, okay. I, I closed it at the open because like you said, I saw the headline. I didn't listen to CNBC. I saw the action and the price, and, and I said, that's wrong. And let me explain to you. 
the data, the two important points from the data in the morning were participation and the uh, the actual uh, unemployment rate. It dropped drastically and participation increased. The participation increasing was good, but the fact that the job rate dropped when participation increased, that means the job market is hot, hot, hot. Everybody that wants the job has it because the way they count jobs, believe it or not, they make phone calls and they ask, are you, are you unemployed? Yes. Are you looking for a job? No, they don't count. That's the participation part. So if, if the yeses on the participation part is higher, that means there's a bigger pool of people and they were able to drop the rate. That is not an artificial drop in rate, but actual heat of the, in the job market. So then that forces the Fed's hand to actually be more aggressive with their bearish, uh, hawkish action. Mm -hmm. And so I said, be careful of the reversal. In fact, it's shortable. And boom, the day unfolded terribly. So look a little bit further for last week and see what actually scared the markets. It wasn't the virus because Zoom would have spiked because all the virus stocks fell. Uh, and I don't get it. Like everything that's uh, Zoom, uh, yeah. Workout at Home, uh, Net Netflix, Roku, they all dropped. Those are stocks that should Netflix uh, should rally. You watch more Netflix if you're sitting at home. Um, Zoom, for sure, it's like the easiest one. Um, so it, they didn't. So it, it wasn't virus fears. It wasn't rate hike fears either. What do you? What am I saying? Well, if if the fear was rate hikes. The TLT wouldn't spike. The TLT is the actual price of the bond, which means the yield is falling. Well, yields doesn't fall when rates are rising. I know the Fed doesn't control the yield of the bond. They control the overnight lending rate, but they push the whole market in one direction. So either the Fed's hand is going to be forced to stay in a QE forever. Mm -hmm. This may be Wall Street trying to force Powell into raising the white flag like they did in 2018. We crashed into Christmas when he decided to go ahead and restart the QE. So maybe they're doing the same thing. <laughs> so, some, so no some, Christmas rally, no Christmas rally. Uh, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying something else is going on that we don't know about, that I don't know about. And I said, because I have an extra question mark, I should be humble with catching knives. If I'm long, I shouldn't add because all I learned new is I have one extra question mark that I didn't have two weeks ago. So I should be cautious. And there are trades within that. Like if I like Palantir, under 20 is a reasonable starting point. If I'm already long, I shouldn't add, even though it's a reasonable starting point. If I'm looking to get long, I should sell a put in Palantir into 16 and collect money to be long down there. So that would be a, a, a good maneuver, uh, for example. So anyway, there are things to do. But you have to respect the technicals as well because they lend us some um, intraday, intraweek action points. Like I know this week, is this a daily job? This is a, an eight-hour chart, basically almost a daily. I know that this drop is falling into prior pivot points. So this was a top in September. We had a September correction, which was, if you remember, sentiment down here was very sour. Everybody was thinking, yeah. this was it. We topped. The market is done. And then I said, no, I bet we make new highs before we correct. And sure enough, we made new highs. Same story now. Well, this hasn't been as long, but it's been more violent, in my opinion. It's been more vindictive almost. It feels like you know, a couple of bad rug pulls and the small caps fell 6% twice let's call it 5% in one day, tw tw twice in a week, almost back to back. And that's a basket of 2,000 stocks. And now the small caps have corrected, um, I believe, 14%. Let me double check. My God. Uh, let's see, the low, the low, 13% from high to low into Friday. So that's a basket of 2,000 stocks. That's a pretty legitimate correction. But to fall, 5% or more in the span of hours is a pretty violent uh, trade. So um, I guess I will share a video with the, with the members 
Um, I don't know if you're going to have a link to that later or not. But anyway, in, I, part of my service with, ben, with Benzinga is I share weekly strategy videos. And the small caps, this chart you're looking at, IWM, RUT, is, um, is, has been my beacon for a while. Because my point was, this is a almost a year worth of sideways action in a basket of 2,000 stocks. Now, mind you, size-wise, they all fit inside of Apple. They're a little around $2 trillion, I think. Double check my math. But anyway, so I was waiting for this candle. I said the S&P and the QQQ are not going to go to the moon while this index is not. I've never seen the market rally and one index not really rally. So I was happy with that. And I said, okay, now the job is to come back and test for footing so we can go. Well, guess what? <laughs> one month went by and we didn't just test for footing. We closed an inch away from the worst close of the whole year, which was my vacation close in J July. I went on vacation and this happened. I said, this is a change in behavior for the small caps. Look at all these tails. What is, what is a tail? It's This candle is one week. So the week opened here. They loved it. And then they crashed. And at, on Friday, they closed here. So they rejected the low. Repeat. Repeat, repeat. So they did not want to close anywhere near here for a long time. These are weeks. And then July happened. Boom. Closed right here. I said, whoa, this could be a change in behavior. Let's see the next scandal. The next scandal closed up here. They rejected all these tails. Since then, they rejected all these tails. Guess what? It's July again. This is my vacation candle again. I want one of these. So that's what I'm looking for this week. If this fails... And we close lower than these tails. Hmm. Now I flip. The machines will flip. Now the pops will be most likely sold, and we may meander down to 190, 185. That's okay. my guess. Nick, and how do you tie this with? Because um, I know you do cover crypto in the chat room, and yeah. you know you've become a crypto bull almost. Well, not a bull. <laughs> I'm a crypto proponent, a proponent, not an opponent. Is that okay. a word, proponent? Uh, so um, I, I think central banks are, are in deep trouble in the long run. That's my personal opinion. Uh, I can right now be in business accepting no regular dollars. There is, I can do business using crypto right now. And uh, the way I do it, but unfortunately, it's still tied to a stable coin of some sorts, which has to peg something. And right now, the easiest one is to peg the dollar. So USDC, USDT are stable coins that peg the dollar. But people who oppose Bitcoin because they're, quote, fake, I think they're missing the boat and the idea. Who cares? So if you buy a Mona Lisa reproduction, it's fake, but it's got value because X number of people want it. Therefore, it has value. Supply and demand. Enough people want this, quote, fake thing. And the fact that the highest bank, the highest banker in the world, Jamie Dimon, calls it fake and a horrible place to store asset, I mean, value. Are you kidding me? I mean, what kind of a statement is that? That is, I mean, and Charlie Munger uh, yeah. and, and um, you haters. Know, I don't get it. I mean, these are sharp guys, they're finance guys. Do they not know that it doesn't matter what widget it is? If enough people want that widget, even if yeah. it's a, cow patty it's 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 not for you but it's got value how can you say it doesn't have value and fake everything man made is fake gold is fake gold is a yellow rock in the ground somebody back then convinced somebody that it's worth something <laughs> it's not the rarest thing on the planet it's not the prettiest thing on the planet but people love it and therefore it has value you can't use it as money its price fluctuates you can use it to pay crime. By the way, the highest crime contributor is cash. So illicit activities with Bitcoin. Really? More illicit than cash? Anyway, nobody pays by check. So Bitcoin is trackable more than cash is to a degree. So the arguments against crypto is weird. And I've been pretty lucky with crypto. I'm still a novice. I'm learning. I'm humble about it. But the concept of it is bulletproof. We are going there. If you watch any sci-fi movie, nobody deals with cash in the future. Nobody's whipping out money on Star Trek. So 
it's just pretty bizarre how people are dead set about something that's in their face. So you don't like it. You don't understand it. Study it. I didn't understand it. I studied it from people in my chat room. I got bits and pieces and then I started reading and I'm still a novice scratching the surface. And I can tell you there are no experts out there. There are people who know more than other people, but there are no experts. So it is falling, I hear. So Bitcoin futures are not as low as the Bitcoin price on my handheld. So uh, pick your entry points. And the way I made money in crypto, every crash I bought and I have not yet lost <laughs> on that stuff. Um, what do I trade? So I don't trade Bitcoin itself because it's the coin that represents crypto. I think there are some actual thesis behind Solana, for example. So I, I thought ADA was it. So you have to differentiate between the actual platform and the actual coin that supports the platform. So Ethereum, um, the actual platform where almost all trans most transactions happen right now. And I could be wrong. If you're a crypto expert, correct me. And then Ether, the coin, supports that. So if you transfer money from here to here or crypto from here to here, you have to go on some roads. So you have to pay tolls and gas fees, as they call them, in order to get that done. And the Ether coin supports that. So, and there's the, and it's clunky and it's slow, Ethereum. So Cardano, I think was a challenger. Uh, I don't know about Ripple. I thought yeah. it was stuck, stuck in litigation. But Solana, I think, was the best. I bought it at 144. I, I booked my profit at 35%, 32%, because that was my rule. And then it ran to 250. So I clearly missed out on upside, but I had profits. So now it's back down, but not very down. And it has it's much faster than Ether, much cheaper. So it should have legs to go. So that's an investable actual transaction. So, yeah, and you chop it all up there in the chat. Room. And then we're getting just an insane amount of questions here, Nick, about the chat room. So um, I'm just going to just get this out of the so way. So you're guys. looking at that. You you guide me however you want me to go. Yeah. I ha I'm drinking my, my brain food here, whatever it's called. C4 Super Brain Performance Fuel. Let's go. Okay. So uh, Joe, yes, Nick has a chat room where he's trading uh, options all day. He also looks at crypto. Uh, crypto as you can see this is something that you know he's he's dibbling uh nibbling on as well so he shares all that stuff with so you so the chat it's room a, the chat a, room is not strictly options i trade options but we have people in there that trade the futures and people in there that trade equities yeah there's so, people that trade different things in there it's not just options but for the most part you know like if you're an options trader uh this is where you want to trade right so nick is trading there all day you know he's there uh, he has a session on Sundays as well. The session on Sundays is for about you know one to two hours or so. He goes over hundreds of tickers. He's going to give you a form where you just put in the ticker that you want. He's going to give you technicals. He's going to go over the actual ticker, and then you can join the session Sunday. It's for chat members only. That's where all of these live things that I do with Nick. That's where they. That's where you'll have access to them. Plus all of the trades that he's putting in in the chat room the education so i know that somebody said like you know this looks a little bit too advanced well we have so many resources and such a we great dumb it down we dumb that, it down to yeah uh, in plain simple english and sometimes somebody in the chat room says hey nick like friday somebody jumped in and said hey we're not all americans in here even sometimes your language is too slangy so fix your language i immediately adjust my like if i say catching the falling knife I take it for granted that everybody knows yeah, what that means. Not everybody's going to know what that means. Right. So now I'm more conscious of saying different things. But somebody says, well, I don't get that. And then I'll pick up a video of, like, if they don't know what a credit call spread is or a bear call spread, I'll throw in a video that explains that. Like, if I said diagonal in there and somebody says, what is that? And then I'll throw a video and say, here's a video I shared before. So here's the, what you consider it. It's like a, a classroom for a whole year. Plus, you get kick-ass um, technical analysis in plain, simple English, not just for me. I have people in there that are strong harmonics traders and people that are strong volume traders. Like they track the volume per transaction. I don't do that. I'm a volume guy when I look left. Uh, the, the, these mountains you see here. So th you've heard the term price is truth. I'm going to comment on Bitcoin since you guys asked. So this is where price is. Uh, these volume bars down here, 
Yeah, Nick, before me. before we go yeah. all in into there, just let yeah. me go over here the final go ahead, questions go these guys had. Um, so yes, there is a 78% discount, Tom. It's gonna expire at midnight. You get the chat room, everything that Nick is doing right now, you'll basically have full access to him. And it comes with a complimentary laptop. You keep it, you don't have to return it. What? Every everything that you see <laughs> Nick Nick doing here, he was just doing it with the chat members now. And the recording is there in the chat room. We have a bunch of tools. I'm gonna show it to you guys later, but I just want to make sure that we answer every question before we continue. So um, yep. I think we're good with that now, guys. Yeah, it does include, Tisha, if you're in the UK, it doesn't matter. You can still join. Yeah, TJ, uh, we have a lot of UK people, Eurozone. I mean, it is so diverse. Uh, I I speak Arabic and French because I grew up and I, I was born, uh, I was born in Lebanon, grew up in Beirut. And uh, I'm amazed at how many compadres are in there too. So, um, So here's the case for Bitcoin. And by the way, if you like discussing charts and if you want to say like, if you're trading something and you say, I think I want to trade, I don't know, PayPal and you, and, and you need just a second opinion and you're hesitant or you need more information about it and you jump in and you say, hey, I'm looking to trade PayPal. What do you guys think? You're going to get 30 opinions. So the, the chances of making mistakes shrink. And we have a chat. My watch list, if I was just trading for myself, would be like 20, 20 tickers, maybe 25. This has become my watch list. I mean, tickers I would never even consider. But so my point is, everybody, uh, everybody's watch list become yours. And um, like this list, 130, 129 tickers, that's every week. And it's different. Uh, some, some repeat. I should track and see how many repeat, but I see new ones all the time. Like I don't remember Wolf before, the Volkswagen, not many people ask for that. And then the ones with yellow, I made actual special videos for them yesterday uh, with detailed how to trade. So it's all over my map. You see people like uh, all kinds of stuff. So even if you don't track a certain uh, like Australian stocks right there. If you don't track uh, certain segments, like uh, if you don't do f fuel, then somebody does BTU and may, they may bring your I to one uh, or two. So I picked up three or four tickers that I want to trade this week just from me reviewing this. And and I promise you I did. Here, I'll show you. So those are the 100 plus 100 120 tickers. tickers from this morning. I just finished. I told you I'm sitting at the here. <laughs> from the chat room. Just want to be clear. Just That's today. Just today. Uh -huh. Chegg is one. I want to check into it. Oh, yes. Chegg, Chegg. Yeah. I, I know you love that. Kind of LAC, stuff. by the way, if you like trading Tesla, we just discovered that from me. Somebody asked about LAC. I don't know what that ticker, ticker is. And I pulled it up and I was like, wait, that trades like Tesla. So if you want a cheap way to trade Tesla for now, it looks like this one. And I'll show you in a second. Um, and uh, Match, look, start to look, starting to look at it. Oracle, maybe. Uh, Pinterest and SE. SE looks like a bargain. Rivian, I had to set up just uh, you know as something else. So anyway, these are my flags on the list that they asked for. That list is for today, 12.05. I did this today. The video is right there. You can see it. I just posted it and shared it. And I'm going to send it out also. So SE looks pretty solid here. But let me finish the Bitcoin here conversation. But it goes to everything. So technically... Um, it is falling into support, and that support was a battle zone before. Look, and then the breakout, and this is the test of it. However, this tick right here, look, these are Bitcoin futures, not exactly Bitcoin, but you know they move in tandem. So I think it could still fall some more. It may have triggered some head and shoulder ish, neckline ish, whatever you want to call it, bearish pattern. So now the key term, the key question is, what happens on the pop? This is where machine code changes when the trend changes so the trend line was up then they buy every dip then the trend line goes flat they call it consolidation they don't decide much they just trade the range and then when the trend line if the trend line de descends then the code in the machines change to sell the pops that's why they trap bulls and they keep doing lower lows and lower highs i'm not saying that's what's going on here but you have pay attention to that slant if it becomes like this then the pops get sold the pop gets sold then how do i know that it's a bottom i know it when it stops making um stops making lower lows like there is no bottom here 
it did not stop making a lower low. Therefore, I cannot assume this is a bottom. I could have a thesis that it's a bottom because of that. But if I take a long, I better stop out if it loses that bottom that I bet on. So that's the trading mentality versus somebody taking a bet and then adding to it and adding to it and adding to it, and then they'll be buried. So trending, investing, different different styles. So I do have a high win rate because the stocks I like to trade are bulletproof. So then I'm picking to sell against um, support levels. And when I sell something, I sell a put spread or a put to own shares. And when I sell them, I set them up with a high uh, odds of success to start with. So the only way I could lose money is if there's a catastrophe. So yeah, and really quick, if you guys are not too familiar with Nick's style, he loves doing credit put spreads, but that you know he does all different types of option trades. If so I, that's, if, yeah, if you're if, trying to learn that, like, so if I'm trading, trader. if I'm taking a credit put spread, I share a video that's about 15 minutes long with three other methods of getting along that stuff. Four, I usually say this ticker is falling into support. First, the video will say. Here's what the what the uh, market looks like. Here's where the S and P is, and so because whatever ticker I'm trading has to trade with the S with the market. So if the market is falling, regardless of how good my thesis is for that particular stock, it's going to have some downside pressure. So I say, hey, if the market is not going to fall apart, this is the following. Um, the following holds true, and then get I get into the ticker. Let's say SE. Somebody mentioned it. I'll say, okay, SE has just shed a lot of weight. So a lot of the froth is left, 30% of it. Now, and I look at the fundamentals. I say, okay, let's look at the fundamentals, um, the income statement. All right, let's total revenue. Whoa, that's a huge ramp, right? So there's nothing wrong with it. They grow like mad. Are they profitable? No, they lose a lot of money, but that's okay. Amazon did this for 10 years. Let's go to look at some statistics. Uh, price to sales, which is the metric that's best for a growth company, not price to earnings, because profitability comes later. How much of the stock price right now is hope? 17, that's cheaper than Tesla. So there is no egregious situation there. It's not exor exorbitantly expensive. Let's go and see if they bleed cash. So cash flow from operations is positive, half a billion dollars. That's a solid company on paper. Okay. So now you do homework and find out what they do. And if there are any hitches that are not obvious from the PLs. So now we're looking at fundamentally it's good. It just lost a lot of weight. Find out why. What did they say in the earnings? But then look at the chart. Is this a mark? So I look left. That's all there is to it. Just where it is, look left. I can't see anything. I can't see anything. So, really quick, Nick. I uh, just want to give a shout out here to uh, to Jessica, Mark, and and to to Sheer for joining here the Options Inner Circle chat. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I got pew, 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 pew. <laughs> okay, so I look left, and I see that this was a base, but it's not a clear hard floor. So I would say this is a catchable zone. So if I usually take a hundred shares to buy the stock. I should take 50% of that or 40% of that because I don't like to average down. Nobody should average down. You should average in and there's a difference. We can talk about it later. So instead of taking your whole percent allotment, if you usually trade an X allotment, you should take part of it. Then you're averaging in, not averaging down. You take a risk and then you make your risk bigger when it becomes a problem. And then you're making your problem bigger. It just doesn't make sense. So um, the video would have the, the fundamentals and then technicals. Okay, it's a viable zone, but it is a zone. So best way to go long when it's coming into a zone is to um, be somewhat hedged. So buying share works because time is not very um, critical. You sit on it long enough. If the markets recover and it's truly a good company, you have a good chance of making money. And if not, you have a uh, limited downside. Then if you buy calls and the VIX is this high, that's like the worst thing you can do because it could be the most profitable thing you can do. But when the VIX is high, everything is priced expensive. So even if you get it right, you're going to lose a lot of that profit to the deflation in the VIX value. So call spread would be the better. And that would be my second least favorite. So my least favorite is the buy calls. I will share it.
My second least favorite is to buy a call spread, but I will share it. My favorite would be to sell a put spread below support or sell a put to own shares. Those are detailed entry points. I showed a video how to do it step by step inside a trading platform. So there's no mystery. Why do I like selling puts or selling a put spread? Because A, the VIX is hot. And if I'm selling a put right now, I'm getting a lot of premium. Somebody's panicking and they're buying protection. I'll be willing to sell, in, sell them the protection if I want to buy the shares. Uh, so the buying the shares or buying the calls or call spreads, you need a rally to win. I'll get to that volume stuff on the left. You need a move in your direction to win. If nothing happens, you don't make money. In fact, you lose money if you bought calls because you've got, you're under, on the clock. You need time on your side, and it's not. Versus if you sell a put spread, if the rally comes, you make your money. If the rally doesn't come, you make your money. If the, the fall continues a little bit, you make your money. If they, they collapse to the support level, maybe you lose money. So there's only one scenario that puts you under pressure versus only one scenario that makes you money. So it's kind of like saying, which is easier to pick a place where a stock is going to go or to pick all the other places where it's not going to go? The way I do it is I go to the places where it's not likely to go and sell the risk there, whether a put spread or a call spread or both. You know, I sold an iron condor on, on Boeing. So my, the lower end of it is under pressure a little bit. As soon as I sold it, there was a pop in the news, something about there, whatever. Uh, so the upper end was under pressure and this trade is still meh. But that's the point. I'm collecting premium and time is on my side. Nick, and for, for everybody here that's really not too familiar with this strategy, can you, uh, do you mind just going over the walkthrough here, how you would place that trade uh, a little bit more on the, on the educational side on, on the how-to? Um, sure, but I first need to answer the volume question. What was the ticker earlier? Bitcoin, I think. Um, IG? No, no, Bitcoin. Uh, somebody asked about the volume bars on the left. Okay, it was an eight-hour chart. Okay, yeah. So the, um, the volume bars speak volume. <laughs> so they say price is truth, right? And these bars down here, they show you um when volume happened like on that day there was high volume on that day there was high volume but that doesn't give me a lot of information especially if the range is wide this information here is transposed up here this is called a volume profile this is really is where price is truth think about it price is truth that's where the volume happened so this orange line draws itself automatically the study is called volume profile. This orange line, they call it a POC, the point of control. It simply said, says this is the place where it traded the most. So this is basically where bulls and bears loved it. They both loved it. This looks like it's high volume. And this is looking back this much time. This is the busiest spot. Second busiest is up here. Third busiest is down here. So it tells me that there's a void of volume down here. So that's why this happened. There's not a lot of volume. So if you lose support, you're likely to go to the second heaviest. So if this gets to here, people who love to trade it here, because we know they love it, price is truth. They told us they did. They're going to be fighting for it. So it's going to be fighting support. So that is a secondary decision-making process to levels. So first tool that I have is levels. Look left, see where the levels are. Second, see where the price is. Where are actually people trading it? Where is their money? When it gets to here, they love it. When it gets to here, they love it. When it gets to here, they love it. Here, they don't care. So that's called volume profile. It has a few other things inside of it, like volume area low, volume area high. It's very useful. It's very useful intraday. It's incredibly useful intraday. Uh, let's go to the SPY. Okay, so this is, uh, let's go to a 15 minute chart. Okay, this is a 15 minute chart. These are the same as these, but only for one day. So these are session volume bars. So here from this day, uh, this was December 2nd, 
I know that this area is very popular. You can see it right there. So whenever price comes back to it, it's going to find resistance because we know people loved it two days ago. So if this rally comes into here, expect sellers. That is a congestion point. Boom, they hit a mattress or a rubber band, whatever you want to call it. If they break out of that, then expect burst higher. But then now you see, if you look back, you see a lot of the nodes. So two days, two days apart, they love the same node about the same. That day in between is up here. The day is up here. So you can see there are a lot of levels where sellers are lurking. Because of this, I can see where they're hiding. And this here is for that whole period of time. This one here. But these little guys are individual session ones. It's very good information. So if you want to learn a study, this is a viable one. I don't have many studies on here. I just added these. I'm testing a software. So I just added them and I didn't have time to take them off. Uh, these lines and all of that. It's a third-party software for harmonics trading. And I, I just wanted to see what it's all about. Somebody asked me my opinion and, and it was free to test it out. Nick, and I forgot to, I, I don't think we mentioned that you have like, I think about 12, uh, 12 of these like get started videos that have like, you know, what is a call spread? What is a yeah. credit put spread? Yeah. What is a I call? Have, all that stuff, right? Yeah. I have um, a whole bunch of, videos to get people started into options. And I believe I broke them down in segments. So I'll give you an example. Like if somebody doesn't know anything about options. So somebody, so let's go with, uh, if, if you don't know anything about options, let's do a little quick lesson on options. But first, let's do a quick lesson on risk. And I think that translates into whether you trade options or not. So um, even if you're just a technical trader, if you don't know this, you probably should do it. So let me see here if I can get... This was a conversation. I will leave it up here. So that was that point D that person was, was drawing. That's not my chart. That's their chart. And I marked it up. All right. So I'll use this as a scratch pad. So I'll give you a second to explain to me. You're leading the conversation. You're giving a class about uh, risk. Can you define risk for me? And I can guarantee you that um, most of you, all of you, not most of you, all of you will get important pieces of that definition, right? But I can almost guarantee you that nobody will put it this, the way it needs to be put. So go ahead, explain, lead the class. Tell us, folks, uh, what is risk? Define risk. Quiet. Come on, over 100 people. Nobody wants to take a stab. Yeah, go in the chat. Nick is asking you guys. He's not yeah. asking himself. <laughs> But what are you chat. willing to lose? Okay, Al, I get that. All right. Don't be shy, guys. Participate. We're all okay, here to learn. so opportunity you're willing to lose, make profit. Okay, Ryan, I get it. Yeah, nobody's wrong yet. Going out of comfort zone, that's touchy-feely stuff. Okay, risk is a loss, maybe. Okay, going out of comfort zone, percentage. Wait, wait, percentage of a percent. Eduardo got the other piece. Okay. So those are the two pieces, chances. All right, Raj and Eduardo, not 50-50. Come on, that's coin flips. That's Vegas, TJ. Okay, so here's the way I would put it. Nobody's wrong, but it needs to be put in two different segments. So let me, let me, let me tell you. So um, to me, it, taking a risk involves two things. Number one, everybody got that one right. Uh, hey, how much can I lose? And that goes to anything. If you go into a fight, a fighter will say, you know, and not let's not go fighting. I fight for a sport, so I always go there. Um, whatever. If you're, if you're jumping, if you're trying to jump one, one ledge to another, you ask yourself, you look down, you say, what's the maximum? Am I going to twist an ankle or am I going to die? And, and that's the consequence. You debate it with your family and you decide, okay, I can risk $500 or I can risk $10,000 or $1,000 on this trade. You decide on that part and you say, I'm okay risking that money, which means you're okay losing that money. That's the statement, okay? Now, you don't want to lose it, but that's the statement. You're okay. You, you should never take a risk. You can't lose. That, that puts, what? No. <laughs> so therefore, you should never short stocks the traditional way or sell a call, make it ever. 
because the, uh, the, the risk is unlimited. You cannot define the maximum risk when you short something unlimited. Okay, the second part, and that's the important part where people don't really address, hey, what are my odds of winning? The percent, you know, uh, it's all good and dandy that I know what I'm risking, but what are my odds? And that, folks, is the, the thing you, you uh, manage. This, you make the decision and you set aside. I told you, you don't average down. If you decide you want to risk $1,000 and you want to average down, don't risk $1,000. Risk 500 and add the other 500 later. So average in, not average down. So the percent is really the decision maker. So whatever trade you do, however you do it, you decide to go in, in that trade. You buy stock, you, 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 you short stock, whatever you do. You assign yourself odds. And if you don't, then uh, you should. You should go into the habit and say, okay, I like my odds and they're about 50-50. Or I like my odds and I think I have way better odds than the other side because of A, B, C, D, whatever. You did homework and you found something out. In options, that odds number is given to us in the delta column. So I don't have to guess. I have a value I can use. It's not bulletproof, but it's a great way to control my risk. So um, this is super important, super important. And if you don't have it, you should do it. So every trade needs to have this, these two. And you know what else it needs to have? Another acronym that I preach inside the, the chat room is uh, in, to all my folks, videos and trade setups and everything, NTNT. So this is an acronym that I, I may have stolen from somebody else, I don't know, years and years and years ago. I heard somebody say something like that, and I've been using it and changed it. So no trigger, no trade. What does that mean? If I take a trade without a reason, I'm winging it. So you say, Nick, I'm not a technical analyst. I don't need triggers, okay? How about no thesis, no trade? If you don't use the charts, you darn well better have a thesis. Why are you buying the stock? You either have a trigger on a chart or you did homework and you think that you know something that most people don't and not enough people do. Therefore, by the time they realize what you realize, you would have been in and they'd be chasing and you would have profits. So you get in at the ground level. So no trigger, no trade, no thesis, no trade. So if I don't have a trigger on the chart, and I don't have a thesis, and I still go long a stock, what am I going long on? How do I know when to get out? Okay, so in the chat room, I would have, um, hey, I'm down, I have this trade, this, this many calls. Uh, I have the calls for January on stock ABC, and I'm down 30%, should I get out? Whoa, okay, so this is where I go back and post to them. I say, why did you take it? Um, the trade. Some people take offense to it, but I'm truly asking why to see if that reason is still there. So my answer would be revisit the reason that made you take the trade. Well, I thought it was going to go up. Okay. So lesson time. I thought it was going to go up is not a thesis. I thought it was going to go up because da, 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 da. okay, now it becomes a thesis. So um, if you don't have a reason, then you should probably get out of the trade and reset it when you do have a reason. This way, then you have a reason to get out, uh, a way that tells you, okay, my percent loss uh, uh, is too great now. My winning odds are too low. It's coin flip. I'm not a gambler. I'm a bad guesser. I shouldn't uh, trade on coin flips. Uh, therefore, my edge, I lost my edge. I should get out. I can retry later. Um, for example, in NEO, I like it. Somebody said, hey, can you look over NEO? Okay, I like its PNL. Um, I like to trade the stocks. Let me go to daily, I think would be good. So let me put my lines. There's going to be a lot of lines. So um, unfortunately, it's stuck in the Chinese headline. So this was ongoing and going very well. And then boom, the Chinese headlines of delisting DD came out. So now it becomes where if I took longs, against uh, support and the support failed, I should really get out and re-engage lower if I took it as a trade. If I took it as an investment, I shouldn't add. 
So in a chat room, this goes on all day, every day. It sounds too technical, but it's not because I usually share the chart for somebody that wants to learn, but I usually give my opinion in plain, simple English. Like, okay, you don't know what support is, but I'll say, hey, if they lose the, the level at 33, I expect the sellers to continue beating up on it. It does have another level just below that and another one just below that. So if it's an investment, I may not want to panic out, but I shouldn't add yet. That would be the answer that I would have. So, so this, Nick, is like, um, because this is kind of new, the way that you know we're doing things here at Benzinga. So people are typically used to just getting like, Somebody telling them, hey, buy here, sell here, this instead is, of getting a full yeah. detailed explanation, no. your opinion. So I share I share the video of trade setups that I would take for myself in three, four other ways, like I just noted, mentioned earlier. But, and it's almost one a day. But then this discussion, we have like 40 a day, 30 a day, 20 a day. It depends on how active the chat room is. So they are in there. And uh, so uh, I just posted the video here. Yeah, show them the in. chat. Show them the this, chat. This and is all the, the chat. Oh, this okay. is the chat. So, um, so they they were asking questions. Somebody came in late and asked for some stocks that may not be on. So I have to go in and add them. Uh, okay. So these were three different videos with about sixty percent of the market. <laughs> uh, this one had. Boeing, Disney, shoot, I forget who. Okay, uh, there we go. Disney, Roku, Boeing, and Zoom, detailed videos. This one is NVIDIA, AMD, uh, basically semis. This one is the Fang Gang, uh, Microsoft, Apple, and Tesla in that order. After trade setups. That, after, Those are trade setups, after, right? No, these were updates on trade levels because the week was difficult. So I figured everybody had question marks. So look at Facebook. This looks right here like it needs to hold. Otherwise, that looks like a head and shoulders that where this is the target. So my trade setup during this video, I believe, I think I set that orange line right there. That's an alert for me. So it is a viable dip, but you're assuming that markets will hold and you're assuming that these will hold. So if somebody takes a long in Facebook here, they're not wrong. They're just trading, not investing, which is totally okay. But they should, if they are trading, stop out and re-engage lower. But if they're looking for an investment, this might be a better entry point, especially that pops are gonna be met by sellers uh, into 328, into 340. If you look at that orange line right there, uh, that is the highest point of volume in this period of time. So sellers are lurking up there on pops. So you don't wanna pop and come back and draw the right shoulder. So then, you know, you. If you took the trade, what, what you should do is book profits on pops, not look to add or say, oh, this is the all clear. Let's go back in. That's not the right thing to do. But these conversations happen in the chat room. So yes, I do provide my trade setups. I don't consider the service as a trade alert. I consider it as an education slash learn and earn for a year on anything you want. I mean, I trade options, but if you want to trade chart, uh, equities, I mean, the comments will go to equity and I will discuss them. Like if somebody says, I'm looking to buy Facebook for the long term, then I'll give the opinion using equity. And, um, and then I'll extend it to whoever wants to sell puts to own the shares lower. Okay, so how about we do a lesson on uh, puts on NEO? Are you looking to buy puts on NEO, Ryan, or sell them? Let's, this will be a conversation. Like Ryan is in the chat room. Okay. You're in the chat room right now. <laughs> he says, puts on Neo. I don't know if Ryan is in the chat room, but I'm saying we are in a chat room right now, you and me, and buy puts. So, okay, so Ryan wants to buy puts. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so this is an education and a trade setup in, in one. All right, so let's go to Neo. Uh, this is Neo. Excellent. So Ryan says, he, what about buying puts in NEO? Which means if you don't know what buying puts is, um, my answer, by the way, Ryan, no. If it loses this, yes, for a trade. But this is support. In other words, Ryan wants to short a stock when the stock is falling into a very sharp prior bounce level. Okay, so that's a no-no in my book. 
Now, I think he's not wrong because it just lost a very sharp bounce level right here. And that makes it a bearish trigger down to 26 or 24. So if somebody shorted it on Friday, I don't blame them. If somebody wants to short it the Monday, I would wait to see what happens here. But technically, this could be headed to 26 to 24. So they, uh, Ryan is not wrong. So let me use this opportunity to define options. How many in here don't know what options are? Give me a one. Type in a digit one. If you don't know what options are, we just like, if you just, okay. I threw a poll out there for you, Nick. Yeah, okay, good. But I need a one. Me. Okay. I think there are some shy people. Come on, show me. <laughs> I'll I'll tell you there's no nobody's judging. All right, there's enough. There's enough. I'm good. Okay. So uh, options, what are they? They are contracts between buyers and sellers. And when there's a contract, there's usually some terms. When you get into a contract, when you buy insurance, you come you go into a contract with your insurance provider. You pay them money, they commit to providing a service for a certain period of time to up to a certain level of money, right? You buy a car, you insure it for 300,000 or whatever, uh, you know, 100,000 for the car, 300,000 for bodily injury and whatever. You pay a premium, they agree to provide you with a service. They will buy the car from you basically for a full replacement if it gets stolen, correct? That's the nuclear scenario. So just like that, the puts. Now, th these options contracts, there are two kinds. One is called um, puts and one is called calls. Don't get wrapped up if one is bearish and one is bullish. They are not. They're both bullish. They're both bearish. It depends on what you do with them. Okay, so I'll explain. I'm going to use the put side. It's easier to explain. So if I owned 100 shares of NEO and holy micro, after hearing what happened to Didi, I'm worried. I want to protect myself. How do I do that? I want to buy insurance on my shares. I have 100 shares. I want to insure them. I go out and I buy a put. It's basically going out and buying insurance. And I say, you know what? I got in at 10. I'm okay staying in my stock. I like it. So therefore, I am bullish the stock. If I was bearish the stock, I would get out, right? I wouldn't buy insurance. I would just get out. So. I want to keep them. I'm okay losing to 28, but after that, I want to be out. And this is a theoretical scenario. So I go out into the options world. I choose how long I want to cover my options. Let's say, let's say January. I go out and I buy a January um, options contract. It expires in the middle of January. I believe it's the 21st. They vary plus or minus a few days. Um, and for that, I pay a premium. So I buy a put, I'm going to round fictitious number. It costs me $100. So what happens? I buy it. There's a seller on the other end. I hit buy, somebody else hit sell. The orders dangle. They meet up electronically. Magically, they happen. There's a seller over there and a buyer me. Who's bearish? Nobody. Because I'm bullish because I still like the stock. Therefore, I'm protecting it. The, the seller of the put is bullish because they want to buy the shares. So here's what happens. When I buy the put, I, I, I buy myself the right to sell my shares at 28 at any point in time between now and middle of January. Any point, I can do it today, I can do it tomorrow. Price does not have to be at that price. That's something that most people don't know. I'd be an idiot to do it now because I'd be giving up immediate losses that I don't need to. But usually if the price collapses, I call my broker and say, please exercise my right. I own the right to sell the shares at 28. They are currently at 24. So what happens? Your shares will leave your account at 28, even though the price is at 24. And you only paid a dollar. So your break-even point was 27. Okay. So the person on the other end who sold you that put wakes up owning 100 shares of your sh sh uh, stock. So what happens to their position? So when they sold the put, it shows up as a short put sale 
open order, or open um, position, and they collected $100. Now, while the stock is falling, that $100 increases in size. So it shows them losses on their end because um, they only collected 100 and now price has fallen and now it's worth a lot more because it's currently at or below current, uh, above current price. So the price has fallen through it. So um, that asset that they sold, the put is an asset and the asset that you bought, the put, is now worth well over 100. Let's say it's worth 400. So now it's worth four times. So they lost four times their money on paper. But whenever I say, okay, take my shares, their position disappears. The losses disappear. They keep their hundred bucks that they collected from you. And instead, they just buy your shares. And they don't have a choice. They wake up owning it. I was assigned shares this week. Not a problem. It wasn't Neo, something else. But hey, I said I would want to buy the shares. I sold that put. It went into money. I didn't panic. I didn't buy it back. I didn't experience a loss. Now I own shares at a bargain price. That's it. So that person will own the shares at 28. They start losing money at 27. If they hold on to the share at 24, they can sell it and lose $4 a share or keep it. And then if it rallies to 30, they made money. If it rallies to 28, they broke even. If it rallies to 30, they made money. So the buyer of the put got what they wanted. The seller of the put got what they wanted. It's not bearish. It's not bullish. It's more bullish than anything. So that is an option, a put option. I buy protection. The seller of the put sells me that protection. And immediately when they sell it, they become at the mercy of the buyer, me. The buyer is in control of everything. Do I need shares to buy the put? No. So why would anybody like Ryan may or may not own shares of NEO? I believe somebody else wanted to too. So they are basically mildly shorting the stock, which is pretty smart. Um, I'll get to traditional shorting, why it's a no-no. If you want to short a stock with limited funds, that's the way to do it, what they suggested. So let's say I now think Neo was falling to 20. Let's just say, let's say this is Ryan's thesis. So Ryan goes out and buys that $20 put that we talked about. It only costs a dollar. If Ryan's right and the stock collapses to 20 or 22 or 24, that dollar becomes $4, $5, $7, $10. Remind me to tell you a story on Friday. And um, so what do they do with that? How did they make money? They didn't even um, need to buy the shares. What they can do is they can turn around and sell the put itself, the contract. They can sell it. So they paid a dollar for it. Now it's worth four, five, six dollars, three dollars. And if they sell it, they keep the difference. And that's per contract. So if they do 10 of those, it's you know a grand or 10 grand. It depends on I'm making up these numbers, but that's how people can quote short. So when I buy a put, the maximum money I can lose on that trade if I don't own shares is the money I spend for the puts. If I buy one contract and it costs me a hundred bucks, so be it. So then uh, that's all the money I can lose. If the stock rallies to a million dollars, I can't lose more than that. Now, why is this better than traditional shorting? To traditionally short a stock, you borrow a stock. So Ryan would have to go borrow NEO shares and sell them right away. So he's selling shares he doesn't have. He borrows them from anybody out there. He says, I'm shorting. They enter a sell order. Their broker immediately borrows shares on their behalf and puts them into a short position of NEO. I don't know why this still is legal. Anyway, so uh, they allow people to get in trouble to blow themselves up. That's, that's the, the illegal part about it, in my opinion. Anyway, not every account should be short, allowed to short. So ideally... If they're right, they collected $32 for the stock because they borrowed it and sold it right away. And then the stock falls to 24 or 26. Then they return the shares. How? They buy it back and return 100 shares. Meanwhile, they pocket the difference. But what if the stock does one of the GME moves? Then they have unlimited losses for as, until they cover their short. And sometimes they say, okay, so I'll just jump in. I'll put a stop loss. Hey, buddy. 
if you've been trading long enough, you know that doesn't always work. And then that's how you get these short squeezes because they start outbidding each other because they're in a panic mode. I've got a margin call. I've got to short it. So even if the price is 32, they'll enter an order for 36 and 30, 40 and outbid you and boom, you get a short squeeze. Buying a put to short a stock when you don't own any shares is also a viable use of that put. So don't sell puts into a stock you do not want to own because you end up panicking and buying back the put and you lose three, four, five, six times your money. It's just not right. Uh, use a sold put spread, also called a bull put spread or a credit put spread. So now we're getting a little bit wonky into the options. Goal here is to open up a new chapter for you on options. They are contracts. There's a buyer and there's a seller. Nothing is bearish, nothing is bullish. What you do with it makes it what it is. You can be, it's like a symbiotic relationship. The first example, there's a buyer that's buying peace of mind. There's a seller that wants to buy the shares. So nobody's bearish. They both have the same goal. They like that stock. One wants it lower. One wants to get out of it if it goes to that point. So win, win. And the broker wins. <laughs> so this is the put side. Are we good with that? If you're good with that, I can explain the call side in an equally as simple example. And I haven't spoken any Greek yet. No theta, no vega, no gamma, no nothing. Best time to buy. Best time to buy protection in the day. Oh shoot! Yeah, Ryan, I'll I'll see if I can answer that. All right, David. Good to know. Feedback. The market. I can't see the future, Bobby. Uh, nothing in the news right now should crash the market. If the market, quote, crash, it's because something broke, a, a black swan event. Yeah, it can happen any day. Okay, um, so let's get into the call side really quickly. Again, it's not bearish. It's not bullish. It's what you do with it that actually matters. So we just talked about puts. Let's say. I wanted to buy Get Long Neo. Um, and I don't want to right now put my all my money to buy 100 shares. I'd have to spend 3,200 bucks. I, I like it. I don't like it that much. I'm afraid. I want to put less money on the line, but I want to get long. So there is a happy medium. You go into the options tables and they're there. You can see two sides of the table. The right side would be puts and the left side. I, I should have brought a platform, but I didn't open one. I don't want to go open one. So... Um, you go and you click on the price you want to pay. So let's say you would like to buy it at 36. So you can lock your price at 36 for X period of time. You can lock it for one week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, three months, six months, two years. You can go out. So let's say we use that same January uh, or February example. So I go out and I buy a call at 36 for February. What does that mean? It means that between now and the middle of February, I own the right, not the obligation. I don't have to do it. I don't own shares. I may or may not own shares. It doesn't need to be. Uh, I own the right. I reserve my price at 36. So if the stock price goes to 50, some poor schlep out there is on the hook to deliver me shares at 36. So they got to do whatever they got to do to get me those shares at 36. Um, so... The price I pay for that call is basically my break-even point. So if I said I want to own it at 36 and I paid $2 for that, then my break-even point is 38. So if I if I say to the broker, hey, assign me those shares, please. I, I have I own calls. Okay, so then they'll give you 200 shares or 100 shares from somebody out there. And uh, that somebody's problem is to go get them. All you know is you wake up owning them at 36 and you won't break even until 38 because you paid $2 for that. Anything above that is gravy, instant profits. Do you have to exercise? No. If you bought the call for $2 and the stock rocketed to $50, that call will turn into 15, 20. I don't know. I'm estimating. If so, you just sell the call. You don't even need to buy the shares. Then you made money without buying shares. So it's kind of like if you guess correctly on price movement, options 
are a way better bang for the buck than stocks. That's a fact, which makes them potentially dangerous. If they are safer than stocks, if you use them um, responsibly, and I can explain that by selling a put, but we may not have time. So the education piece here, we define the put. If I buy it, it offers me the right, not the obligation. So when you buy insurance on your car and you have a fender bender, you're not obligated to provide uh, to file a claim, correct? You own the right, but you don't do it. Same with owning a put and you say, hey, I still like the stock. I'm comfortable. Uh, I can sell the put out and recover my money, maybe even make money on the put, but I want to keep the share. So you're not obligated. You have the right to act. Same with the call. You bought the right to buy them, buy the shares at 36, but you're not, they're not going to force you. If you don't want it, you can just sell it out, sell it back out and say, I changed my mind. Give me whatever it's worth now. If it's more than $2, hey, you made money. If it's less than $2, hey, you lost a little bit of money, but so be it. So they are viable tools and they can complement however you trade now. So if you're a equity only, a stock person, uh, incorporating some options is smart, especially if you want to protect yourself. What if I tell you you can protect yourself for free using options if you own shares? There are a couple of trades you can do that give you free protection for a period of time. Something asked, someone asked something earlier. I can't remember what it was. No, this is not my chat room. My chat room is here. This one. Yeah, I just posted the link in the chat. This is a Zoom session, guys. The actual chat room where Nick is chopping it up with the members. That's what he's showing you now. And I mean, show him a bit, Nick. What's going on there? So um, what's going on there is somebody mentioned last week, oh, how the options blew up on Friday. People invested pennies and they made thousands of dollars. It was just amazing if they timed it right. So if you bought a put option in the morning on the pop in the SPOI as any index, any stock. And, and by the end of the day, you were basically, you paid off your car. <laughs> That's how crazy that thing is. Uh, so the, the opportunity to make money in the chat room is cool. And right now I've been more active day to intraday setups. Let me see if I can find some. Uh, that was a joke on my part. You see headline writers, they go, uh, stocks close out volatile, weak lower amid weak November payrolls, Omicron jitters, NASDAQ sheds 1.9, right? I rewrote the headline. Racer Nick reports, the Dow basically shrugs off <laughs> weak payroll and Omicron jitters. The Dow was minus 0.1%. It's just um, don't fall for the headlines. Read them, but use your own judgment. I'm trying to find the trade setup pictures that I put. Oh, that's Alibaba, the discussion. Okay, intraday, these days, I track the price action for the active traders in there. I have a few active trader traders in there, and they like to uh, make bets, not make bets, trade the action intraday. So this is a five-minute chart on the SPY, and I say exactly where the triggers were. I had given them value that this would be trigger one, this would be trigger two. So if somebody doesn't get long here, they should wait until above that to take it. Um, and I update that. And uh, this is uh, VIX. So the VIX started losing steam. I said, you want it to start doing that. Otherwise, the bears are still in control. So this is where you had a, an ascending trend in fear, a stabilizing trend in fear throughout the day. And then you want to build a descending trend in fear. So I'm giving them things to look out for intraday for those who actually are active intraday. If they're not, then I'm discussing longer term swings. So this is on the um, small cap, somebody asked. Somebody posted, <laughs> I said, hold hands to get a couple of good tickers, a couple of good green ticks. Somebody just decided to pop in a joke. So it's a lot of fun. Somebody was asking um, what, um, indicators I use. And this was the vol volume profile indicator from uh, TradingView. This was the uh, market on close and balance that I posted for them. There were two huge ones this week, 8 billion. That's pretty big. You don't see that often. And almost 4 billion on, on Friday, on Thursday. 
Um, so we scroll up. So this is a chat room. The conversation goes about, hey, what do you think about? Okay, so this person, check this out. This person in there, Sterlinga. Hi, Sterlinga. Uh, took an NDX book. They asked me the day before, what do you think about an NDX put contract? And they took one. They made 50000 That wasn't my idea. It was them. But I shared the chart when they asked me about it. So I'm not saying you're going to make 50000 and the NDX is not a friendly ticker. Uh, you, tough ticker to trade. Very infrequent, not very liquid, and it just trades like crazy. Uh, so anyway, uh, let me see here. Trying to find. Okay, so morning. In the morning, I provide a write-up like this. Middle of the day, I provided an update. Short-term bets, I gave them short-term bets. Um, I, what I would do now, nothing new until I find new clues. I do not add to risk. I can nibble longs on things that I think have hit some support. And here are three things I can do now. Gold is starting to look like it should bounce soon. TLT should fall soon. And so I wouldn't get short the TLT if I'm long markets because that's about the same trade right now. And if I go up here, um, let me see here, my morning note. I'm trying to find a morning note to show you how it, it provides guidance. So but if you, if you don't believe me about Friday, this would be probably a perfect thing to show you. Okay, here somebody's asking about volume profile study. Point of control means the highest point of volume. Um, okay, that was the lesson about POC, and I'll show them how it is an important level for the day. Uh, that's a breakout potential that I've been tracking, whatever this was, Apple. Oh, okay, so Apple was a huge win for us uh, for uh, this week. It was amazing. So I think I'm, what was Friday? The third? Okay. And, and this doesn't include the upgraded chat that we already have in the final stages of development. Oh, yeah. You it's know, a totally, is, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a totally new chat. It's it's going to be totally although, different from what you're seeing in although like a couple you can, weeks. Although, although you and me can direct message all day. I mean, these people should not be here right now. That's not an open room. But hey, it's cool. They're doing homework. I'm trying to find the morning note. Da, 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 da. I'm close. <laughs> no, it didn't reset, did it? So that's how much you have to scroll back. Right. That's uh, one day. That's one day. One day. Okay. That's the wow. heat map. I'm still in one day. Oh my God. I hate when that does that. Um, okay. So this is where we're getting close. This was the, the trade, the breakout trade we caught the day before. And the tough Friday, I said, we are testing the breakout from Thursday. So that Friday was normal price action. That's what happens. You break out, you come back and retest for footing. There we go. Ooh, yes. So this was the plan. I posted it earlier before the day started, but I reposted it because some people may have missed it. It looks better when I post it first. Now here, it just concacts it, takes all the spacing. So I said, okay, uh, the official write-up, uh, so far, the open looks up. The pre-open on Friday was green. The jobs report should be reasons to worry. That was my statement to everybody in there. I said what I said here earlier, participation, bad news is from the unemployment rate, it's too low. Why? If it's too low, it forces the Fed to be more hawkish. Uh, Fed has two jobs. One, create jobs without creating inflation. And it created jobs at the cost of inflation. And they told us that. Ergo, now they have to push the brakes on inflation through faster taper and rate hikes. So that's the bearish part. Yet the market spiked. I said, this rally could revert, should just be careful. I booked my profits early and stop out fast. Uh, keep an eye on the VIX 25. If it goes above it, uh, opens a, uh, no, if it goes below 25, it opens the door for a stock rally. If it's above 27, um, all bets are off. And then I provide the lines that would matter for that day. So the chart would look like this. This would be at the time I took it, support below, resistance above. So they know not to chase prices in here for today. Uh, 446 through 436 is an important zone from weeks ago. So you have to pay attention to that. So a whole plan before the day starts every day. Middle of the day, a recap with a video, most days. Back to today, back to now, back to here. So all this is um, yours. So what do you want to call this service? Trade alert? Hell no, it's not. It's a traders trading together so they get better results. 
along the way, a crap ton. Can we cuss? No, let's not. A lot of education for a year. Uh, it to, the price to me is an insult. Um, and because it is um, as much effort as I put into it, I promise you, I did nothing this weekend. Nothing. I watched a couple of episodes of a one-hour show yesterday, and that's it. The rest was me stuck on screen resetting 56 alerts that f- fired. Uh, I may have scrolled through them for, for the chat room. 56 alerts. I, I shared them in a long table there. <laughs> so now I have to go in and reset all of these alerts because those are our trade alerts. So um, I encourage you to at least try it out. Hey, um, Rodrigo, are you um, you're offering the money back guarantee, right? Yes, we do offer a seven day money back guarantee for anybody yeah. that wants to give it a shot and uh, join the sessions. Right. If you join what is today, Sunday. Yeah, you'll have access to the to, to the next call, right? Next Sunday that you oh, have. Absolutely. I can week. give them the video now if, if they want. But um, so anyway, um, somebody's asking or somebody asked no. me to ask. Somebody is uh, somebody's asking a tax question. Is that what it is? I'm not sure, but maybe they should ask their accountant. Right, exactly. I'm not yeah. a tax accountant. So with options, it's like you make money. It's like stocks. Um, I'm sure there are nuances in there. And if you're a professional trader or not, it differs. So. For tax uh, questions, it's for your tax person. Oh, I promised you three ways to protect the stock. Are you interested? <laughs> no. Let, let us, <laughs> no that, that no was for the question on the couch. No, no, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Drop it in the chat, guys, if you want Nick to go over the stuff. He's, okay. he, he's the slave right now. He's ready okay. to go. So I, I'm going to say one thing before that. If I own shares of a stock that has options and it's a high dollar stock, I would never own it without selling covered calls against it. What does that mean? So if I own uh, 100 shares of Tesla or 100 shares of Apple, which is probably more realistic, um, so I can sell calls to somebody out there that wants to own it higher where I don't mind selling my shares. So for example... Now, let's go with Apple. I said Apple. I'll go to a weekly chart so we can have a clean look at it. So Apple's had a good run. This is not a good entry point for Apple, by the way, uh, not as an investment for the for the midterm. I mean, clearly over time, if the markets are higher, Apple is higher. I think Tim Cook will break it, but that's years ahead. So if I'm willing to own, if I bought my shares wherever, here at 120, and I'm willing to sell them at 190, Somebody's willing to pay me for that. And that's called a covered call. So I sell it. I say, okay, you want to buy them at 190? You can have my shares. They'll pay you now. And you're basically uh, giving them that uh, right. So between now and say, if this was an April or, or January call, between now and January, they can call you on the fact, hey, they want your shares but you keep the money. So if you collect $2, then your break even point would be 192. So you're winning for what happens. Worst case scenario is more profits and more profits and then the bad thing is that you you stop contributing uh, you start participating with profits above 192. Like that's a, you know, first world problems. Like, oh, I stopped profiting at 192. Big deal. So I would never sell a covered call that I would not honor. And if you say, yeah, I don't have a problem doing it, uh, I'm going to call bull on you because most people that I see, they chicken out. Oh, Nick, I sold the cover call. I'm in trouble. It's like, how are you in trouble? The cover call sale should be a no-lose situation. It should be like a more profit, less potential profit situation. I wouldn't sell a covered call and a stock that fell down to here and my entry point is here and I sell the cover call here. So then if it spikes back to my original spot, I lost money and that would be just heartbreaking. I wouldn't do that. So free way to um, protect the stock. That's what you use. You sell a covered call, you take the $2, you buy a put for $2. So now if the stock crashes, you're protected for free. If the stock rallies above the covered call, 
you have to sell it. So worst case scenario, you're protected for free or you profited all the way up to that call you sold and then some, and not and then some, to that call you sold and then you're out. I said not and then some because you, you used the $2. You didn't keep them. So your break-even point is not higher. So I sell a covered call. Never sell a naked call. Covered call meaning I own 100 shares. I sell one call. I own 100 shares. I sell one call. Each call represents 100 shares. So I sell a call. I buy a put. That's one way to protect my put for free. There's another way to stay long the stock for free while protecting all the money that you had invested in it. So second method is if I own 100 shares and I want to take out my uh, my my risk, 100 shares times $161, that's a pile of money. I can take that money out by selling the stock, getting out of it. But you're saying, but I want to be long the stock. Okay. How much protection do you want? 10%? So would you like to own it at uh, 20%, let's say 20%, so 130, 135, 140, whatever. If you want to buy it back at 140, so what you do is I would sell a put at 140, I sell my shares, and I say, you know what? I want to rebuy them at 140. I collect money for that. Let's say I collect $2. Then I buy a call for that $2. So if the stock rallies, I'm still long, but I have no money out of pocket. Worst case, the stock falls to 140, I rebuy it at 140 versus me being in it and uh, drag myself losses up to 140. So if I sold the put to buy a call, it's virtually cost neutral, virtually. There are nuances. So it didn't cost me anything or much. So the stock falls to here. Worst case, I just get back into the stock. So it's like I did nothing, but I was protected. I did not lose this. Versus me not doing anything and lose this. I'll be down 20%, 15% versus down nothing. And I still own my shares. So first one, I sell a covered call to buy a put that buys me time for a period of time, coverage. Or stock replacement strategy. Get rid of the stock. Take the money, put it in the bank. Now it's safe. In, instead, uh, in replacement of it, I sell a put to buy back into the stock with my buffer, 15% eyeball and buy calls. So now I'm still participating upside, but I don't have to be long until it falls to 140. And if it doesn't and it rallies, I'm participating with profits. This is one type of trade. What I do like, Nick, is that you do provide different um, different types of trades, not just no. spreads, not just calls, because when I started trading options, I was only doing calls and puts, and that was yeah. just devastating. You know, it's like either you're a millionaire one day or the, you're the broke calls, the other day. Do yourselves a favor. Don't buy calls on VIX this high. Even if you get it right, you want an example. Uh, did I say it already? The, the SPY, okay, on Friday after the drop, I said I am buying this dip as a trade for the Monday open. Um, I didn't catch the quite the bottom in the SPY. Whoops, SPY. And I was trading the five-minute chart, so it was a fast trade. Um, and I said, I want to catch the bottom. And somewhere in here, um, I bought the SPY puts. Let me see something here, VIX. Okay, so let's see here, December 3rd. Okay, somewhere in here. So let me go back to SPY. All right. In here, I bought some puts. And... Um, they cost me four dollars and sixty cents or something like that. I, I mean, I'm sorry, I bought some calls to bet upside on on the stock market, and it was just a small bet. I said this is an overnight trade at best, maybe today even. I said if I get a spike and I get 20, 30 percent yield, I'm I'm out. I basically wanted them to break out of this neckline and catch a trade up to here, and then I'm out. That was a fast trade, right? So clearly, I didn't time it right because SPY did this. But while SPY did that, watch what the VIX did. VIX did this. So all the options exploded in value. My calls that should have been devastated exploded in value. I made money. I was up 15% when the stock fell another point or half a point against me. That didn't make sense because the VIX is high. What I'm saying is those who bought calls 
even though they nailed the, the entry point better, like those who bought calls up here, let me switch back to the SPY. So those who bought the bottom in the SPY are not better off than me. They're probably worse off than me because they paid the most for their calls because the VIX was at the highest. My VIX was down here, so I bought them cheap. Then the VIX exploded. They bought their calls expensive. Same calls. So I bet Monday I would have a better day if it pops up, the SPY. So I bet I, I, I closed green in my position. I don't know they can say the same. Even though their price is higher, my price is lower, my calls are green because I bought it before the explosion of the VIX. The point is, the VIX this high makes everything high in the options. So I'd be a seller of options rather than a buyer, albeit very careful with my positions. And if I wanted to buy something, I should buy a spread. So here's another part of the lesson. A, uh, instead of buying a call, so when I buy a call, um, I, I'm going to use a scratch pad, clean, clean it up. So this is another part of an options lesson. It sounds complicated, but it's not. Let's say I buy a 457 call. This is not a recommendation. I'm going up here because there are no lines. Nice, clean. So if I buy a call and it costs me $5, that's a lot of money. That's one contract is $500 because every contract is uh, 100 shares. So it's $500 out of pocket for one contract. So, and, and um, that's a lot of money on the line. And I said, the VIX is high. So that really should be 300. But because the VIX is high, it's 500. And then again, these are made up numbers. So the alternative would be to buy a call spread. So I buy this call, I spend the money, I sell a call higher and I collect money. So I'm selling this one. So I spend 500 here. Let's say I, I collect 200. So now I own a call spread. I literally spread my risk. I collected 200 and against the money I spent. So now I'm only spending $300. I spread my risk. So what's the bad news? The bad news is now I'm limited with my potential profit. If price does that, now I can only profit the maximum width of the spread. So if I do a $10 wide spread, I can turn this $3 into $1,000. Big deal, right? It's not a problem. I tripled my money and then some. Now, if I didn't do this part and this happens, this 500 would explode higher. So what kind of trader are you? Me, I would do the spread when the VIX is this high. On Friday, I took a naked call. I did this only without this because the VIX was um, low-ish. And then it exploded. I should have sold the call above it, but I left it open. I don't have a lot of longs, so I felt okay. I may regret it on Monday <laughs> if we open down, but I can, I, you know, anyway, I don't want to get involved in it. The call spread is I buy something, I sell something. That eliminates this high VIX idea because this is expensive, but so is this. So I'm buying something expensive. I'm selling something expensive. I'm neutralizing this expensive VIX thing. Uh, so the VIX is priced off of the option prices. It's like chicken egg. Does the VIX cause the option prices to rise or vice versa? I thought the way Wall Street explains it, the VIX is priced off of the prices of the options. So I think the VIX is a trailing, but it just represents an explosion in the value of the options. Therefore, when it's high, VIX, not the VXX, not the UVIXI, the VIX, uh, which is, quote, the fear gauge, it, uh, it indicates that if I buy something, it's uh, too expensive. So you've heard that term in, in uh, somebody said, uh, protect against uh, earnings. That's what it was. I think it was Ryan said, how do I, when is a good time to protect against earnings by buying a put in a stock? Well, definitely not the week of the earnings because the fear level for that ticker, if it's reporting earnings because of the uncertainty of the headline, is um, it's called the implied volatility, which basically is, quote, the VIX of that stock for that day. So if there is an event, let's say, um, what, who, who got shellacked 40%? Uh, DocuSign, okay? So um, no, that's a bad example. Um, let's say who's reporting this week, CRM reported last week. So if I bought puts in CRM for last week, I overpaid double. 
of the going rate of any other week. So if I bought them for December or January, I paid the going rate for December or January put prices. But if I bought them for that week, I doubled paid. So even though CRM fell, I lost a lot of money due to the deflation in that fear. Because as soon as the stock opens after they report, that uncertainty is gone. The implied volatility collapses. So the, the uncertainty that comes from that event is gone. So you don't do it the same week, Ryan. That's the answer. <laughs> Um, and buying protection is expensive anyway, so I shouldn't do it as a habit unless I need it. So middle of November, I sent out a trade, trade alert with, uh, let me see if I can find it while I'm talking to you. Um, let's see, the trade alert, it yeah. wasn't trade alert. It was yeah. actually a, hey, if you don't have uh, protection or balance, let me give you a lesson about that and a way you can benefit from it. And the idea was to buy protection when protection was cheap. I said, the markets are at all-time highs. You know me, I'm bullish. I'm expecting upside uh, prices. And um, if, if, if your, your uh, portfolio is all up, 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 then um, you are... Oh, man, I have to make my column wider to show the number. Oh, what? Okay. Um, then you need balance. And the way to do it, I shared a whole video explaining the difference between protection and balance. And I'm going to bring it in here as soon as I find my freaking. Yeah. And if you can also show the UPST trade, because a couple of people were asking about UPST. I know you traded that before. Okay. Where is my. Okay. I can't find my uh, cursor. One second. I'm struggling here. Okay. UPSD, what a crazy trade that was. I discussed it today. Oh, my God. All right. This is like comedy of error. So it's not bringing in the values. This is what I'm looking for. My pen is disappearing. I lost my thingy. Okay. So on 11.17, and now it's airing out values, but I can tell you what the values are. So I said I sent out a video. I said, if your portfolio is all bullish positions, here's a way you can balance it out. I said there's a difference between protection and balance. This setup here was for balance. I'm not going to get into it. It's basically selling risk above, shorting markets with room to go. And that would have provided some balance. It's not protection because it's finite. It gives them a thousand bucks or so per, per 10 contracts. But it does provide like balance, overall balance. I don't have to overthink it. But these were protection. And um, this one was, hey, I like protection using the VIX calls because they hold their value best. I, at the time, it was $5 to buy it. It turned into 13, 12, this one right here. On Friday, I think the high on Friday was $12, at least when I saw it. It's not showing it in here. It should come in here, but for some reason, it's not showing it. Live value hookup on Sunday. Um, and these were five bucks-ish, uh, and then some, and they paid $2.90 for them. So protection, you buy it when you don't need it. So if, you're, if you think you're in a stock that you're going to need protection for and it's going into um, an earnings report, then you should think early before it explodes in value and spend some money, maybe protecting yourself, maybe get smaller in the stock, maybe uh, sell some covered calls to offset little downside, sell some calls to buy some puts, shorter term, and it all depends on your time frame. If, you're long, if your time frame is long term, then... Maybe you don't need protection. Not everybody needs protection all the time. So you're asking about upstart. <laughs> Man, that is a violent stock, right? So I'll tell you a story where I didn't trade it perfectly, but I did the right thing. And that's a lesson. So I sent out a trade alert here. I said, it's stuck in a box. That's unusual for such a high, high, uh, fast moving stock. Look, explosion, 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 then suddenly stuck in a bar. I said, like, something's going to happen. I said, you stop out or you chase the breakout. I'm going long. And I sold the put spread or sold the put or bought a call or bought a call spread or bar shares. That was the write-up. Full video on that. And then it popped. So then I got too smart and I shorted it up here with a call, credit call spread. So I made an iron condor. And that painful trade took me up until here to give me back the green. 
And then I closed it. I did the right thing. As soon as I got back to green, I said, I said, thank you. This was a gift. I made a mistake and they fixed it for me. But guess what? If I had sat in my short, I would have gone super green, but I did the right thing. And I'm okay missing out on the perfect trade. Doing the right thing is almost never perfect, but it has to be done every time. So somebody said, well, would you go long upstart now? I was like, uh, no, because I didn't know what that was all about. So I'm not about to trust them not to do this. So I would go long upstart. I put that alert to start looking at it because then it would be in my entry point from down here. Theoretically speaking, this is not an exit point, but I don't trust it. I didn't. I couldn't explain that. Therefore, I can't explain why it would stop here. Uh, how much time dedicated part of the daily? I'm in there all day. I'm in there all day. Uh, it's up to me to manage my time. And I drink a lot of... I'm caffeinated. How about that? Like right now, what am I doing? At 7 a.m. my time in California. I was uh, drinking a cocktail of Super Brain C4 Performance Fuel with Mountain Dew. <laughs> uh, the Sunday chat is at 10 a.m. Um, Eastern, 7 Pacific. But I do record it and I share this um, handy cheat sheet with comments. Not always can I put comments. It's just a lot hours of work. Like, I mean, hours of work. But then the, the cheat sheet is up there all week for them to refer to. Of course, this is not a live chart. So it is at the point in time. But I'll figure out how to make it live somehow, somewhere. And uh, and some people, actually, what they do is that uh, they just they hop yes, into Ryan. the sessions on Sundays. So yeah. Sunday sessions, they just hop in there. They get the update on their tickers and they adjust yep. their portfolio. And I do open a chat window like we're having here for the Sunday session. And uh, like somebody was helping me today because people pop in and they forget to mute themselves. And Rez, he's from the chat room somewhere. He jumps in and says, don't worry about it. Ned. Just keep talking. I'll mute him as they come in. I was like, whoa, that's pretty nice of you. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, so uh, do I provide uh, daily alerts? It's not an alert. I'll, I'll provide daily setups. Yes, but I wouldn't call it an alert. I won't tell you when to close something. I'll tell you, hey, this looks good. This is how I would trade it. It's available. Here's how a few other ways to trade it. Here's a table. Here's a video. Um, here, here's uh, the write-up on it, what leg to sell, what leg to buy, and what the downside is, what the thesis is, what the reason, why am I doing this? What, and um, it's up to you to manage your profits. So I'll give you an example. Like if somebody, I gave them, this was a 20X. If somebody bought calls, and they wrote them to the perfect point. It's at least 20x. Um, if they bought calls, they got the 20x and they didn't book them, they got diddly right now. So they say, oh, he lost me money. Mm, did he? <laughs> and so I don't say get out because every portfolio is different. So what, what was appropriate for me to get out here based on my own portfolio? How am I to say it's time to leave it? For you who may not have another call, uh, uh, you know, another something else that's long. It, it's not appropriate exit points from my point of view that fit everybody else. So it's pretty, it's like what you should do is you should pop into the chat room and say, hey, I took this call. What do you think? I should trim. I would give you my opinion, sure, because I would ask you a million questions. Hey, what do you are you long? Anything else like it? You're not long? Are, are you up? Are you down? Are you risky? Uh, what's your level of pain? Now that I'm looking at it, look at that head and shoulders right there. Did I draw it? Ah. So on the way up, this was a resistance zone, and I didn't hold on the way down. No, I did not draw it. But it looks like if you draw a line here, it's like a head and shoulders sideways. I'm a level guy, so I trust losing this more than losing this. Trend level. So what's the different difference? So you know how you have fake? I am willing to bet. Nobody here picked a bad stock. They usually pick, uh, they have a tough time with the timing. Like I was uh, chatting a few minutes ago with a chap named Fra Frank, and uh, he said, gosh, I have such terrible timing. He, he picked great stocks. He just has bad timing on, on this last set of trades. 
So this is a, a the trigger for a, the trend line is up here somewhere. Now we switch back to a tinier line. So the trigger for the trend line is up here somewhere versus me, I prefer to see a loss of level to trust it that it's not a fake out. I'm willing to forego the difference between these two. Uh, so level trading versus trend trading. Hey, Nick. Yep. I just want to give a shout out here to the new member, JT, just calling in, JT. I, I remember JT's name pop in the chat. That's cool. Uh, DocuSign, what, am I, what do I make of it? Wow. I mean, you rarely see damage like that. So they delivered growth. Uh, the, the report itself was not bad. I don't know if they did it on purpose. You know how sometimes companies... They, want, they say, you know what, Wall Street is jittery. Let's take a chance. We had good reports. We're at all-time high or near all-time high. Let's lower the, the expectations a little bit to make it easier on the next report. And then they may have uh, underestimated the violence reaction. So I think they guided growth lower going forward as an emphatic statement. They said, oh, we lost the pandemic uh, tailwinds. Therefore, it's going to be horrendous going forward. So what did the market do? They erased the pandemic premium, but not all. So let's recap. This is a weekly chart on DocuSign. Weekly. So that's about five years usually. So this is three years. It's not that old. So uh, pre-pandemic world, crash for the pandemic, uh, for COVID, recovery to pre-pandemic. Everything above here is COVID premium. So wind aided, like if you're a runner and you've got an asterisk against your um, record because you were aided by tailwinds, they're saying, I think that was the word they used, tailwinds. Wow, that's pretty amazing if that was it. So whoosh, they said, we lost it. So growth is going to be hampered going forward. I don't know their exact words. So read it and see how grave of a, of a warning that they give. Was this an overreaction or not? Regardless, a candle this size you have to respect it will have repercussions. So margin calls, et cetera. I think they have three days to cover the margin calls. So you may see follow-up selling. So if a bounce comes and the bounce gets you out of a long trouble, out of a trade trouble, which I can't imagine it could, I would use the bounce to fix the trades, not to try to chase it for to fill the gap. If the fill the gap could come, but oof, that's tough. That was DocuSign. Any other? Um, hey, are these direct messages to me, Rodrigo? Or no? No, I didn't change mine. Okay, so let's do a, a couple more tickers. Give me. MTTR, it's on the list. <laughs> okay, so hold on. Hold on one second. One second. <laughs> gold. I love gold. One second. Riot, here, that's the list for you. I'm not saying wait. I'm saying I if I'm long, I don't add. I'm saying if I want to get long, this may not be the bottom, so I shouldn't go all in. Okay. All right. So uh, MTTR is on the list, so you can just click on MTTR. You'll get a chart. It is a pivot zone. It's not an all-in entry point for me. It has support here, and it will need the market to stabilize. Matterport. Riot. Uh, if you're using Riot to trade Bitcoin, I would suggest you trade Bitcoin. Riot has lost critical support on Friday. It has better support from a volume profile. See that orange line? That's where it's busiest. So it has support. I would get out if it loses the support. You don't know how low it's going to go. That's Riot. Uh, Square. I love the company. Um, you know, here's the thing. I like Square, SoFi, Affirm. Uh, nailed SoFi and an Affirm entries when they were like in the toilet, especially Affirm. It was like a 20X. And um, PayPal, all of those transactors are at supports. Here's the difference. So look, PayPal is great. Level is great, except when you expand to, I'm going to go to a weekly. Now the difference comes up, okay? That's solid base where it's at. 
imagine if it bounces and it's going to hit solid resistance and then comes back to here and it loses this, it's going to like 160, 140. What the hell? I'm not saying I want it there. I'm saying technically, if you lose this, you do have support. Technically, if the stock market corrects, this one is going to 140, 120. So what's the difference between this one, Visa and MasterCard? Let's go to MasterCard. It already shed all of COVID. It's now at um, you know October lows. And now this is pre-COVID days. It's lower than pre-COVID days back to the, that crazy January bump that nobody could explain before COVID. That was weird. Now they're back to it. Same with Visa. Back to it. PayPal, not back to it. Not even close. This is it down here. Here. So Visa and MasterCard are at this level relative to PayPal. So it still has a lot of meat to give. Same with Square. Now, SoFi is too new. It doesn't, uh, doesn't apply. Like it doesn't have that level. And uh, Affirm, I believe, is the same way. So for those two, we'll go to a daily chart. Hey, Nick, really quick. And I know you, you um, I don't know your, your schedule for today. Yeah. I know we were supposed to finish at 2 p.m. and everything else has oh, been shoot. extra. Oh, no, okay. I mean, you've been doing extra for, for everybody here. Um, so I just want to make sure, you know, like if, if, when, you know, with your time and everything, because, you yeah. know, up to you, right? Up to you, but just for everybody to keep in mind. So let's put a limit on what? Uh, five more tickers after this one. Okay. All right. So, um, this one, we went long here for this opportunity, and then it went to here. So people who went long here, if they were in my group, they'd be booking profits, selling to those people who bought it here because we were long here. And all of this came. I closed somewhere in the middle. I closed early. I'm chicken. I don't care. Uh, you do this for a long time. It doesn't matter. Okay. What was the next one? Upstart we did. Riot we did. Mara puts. Riot puts. <laughs> You're going to tell me if you're selling puts or buying puts, Ryan. I don't know. Um, I don't buy puts into support. So, no. Baba, uh, I tell you what, Luku. Baba, what a shame. A company is dirt cheap right now. Absolutely dirt cheap. But headline risk like you wouldn't believe. This is in the hands of the bears. Every pop is being sold. So, I looked left looking for something look how far back what let me go to a weekly chart look at this back to 2017 2016 i said you know what i'm done with baba i'm gonna do one more bet i placed literally a hundred dollar bet i bought a call that has almost no chance of winning into january or february i can't remember way up here so i need a miracle pop and then i download the software and it shows me this blue line that it draws not me and it's exactly <laughs> from friday's low so i'm taking this as an omen so here's my statement on bottom baba headlines aside this is definitely a bargain price stock but i could have said this a month earlier and a month earlier before that uh, the pe is under 20 the price to sales is ridiculously low it grows like gangbusters uh, unless it delists, of course. So that headline looms. So if you take Baba long, you're taking the risk of the delisting. But at this case, I mean, I bet you you can sell a put in Baba in in the single in, in not single digits under three digits. So a seventy dollar put. Would you like to own it at seventy? I bet you you can sell a seventy dollar put out there. But it's delisting risk. So hey, if I'm long, I don't add. If I want to get long, make a finite risk. And stop out. Say, if you risk a thousand dollars, say I'm out after 20% pain. I pick 20%. Somebody else may pick 10 or 30. That's Baba. Lucid, um, love the car. I hate, not hate, I have concerns over how much people love the stock. That is weird. I did a video once on Lucid and I just said something negative. But it was fact. I got shellacked in the comment section. So that's too much, too much emotions. This is not an obvious investment point for Lucid, my guess. Um, we have a lot of guessing because there isn't a lot of PLs. So a lot of the price is because 
the delivery. They delivered one freaking car. The stock went to the moon. Whoever bought it here is not looking left. You know, if you did that last time, you got murdered. So in here, it ha it is tradable. And you, and you would need to be a good trader. But if you're going in as an investment, folks, I can't imagine this is a Tesla killer. It can't even compete with NEO with unit production right now. Unit production. NEO produces 60,000 cars a year, I think. Lucid's maximum capacity at full capacity, I think, is like 34,000. So even if they get up to speed fully, they're not even half of NEO in unit sales. So of course, the cars are bazillion dollars, which is another problem. It is a niche company so far. They need an introductory car. Um, I think the cheapest is 80,000 to 90. And the one that goes 500 miles is 120 to 170. So that is not a mainstream car. So be realistic. The entry, po entry point from here is technical. There is support, like I said in the box. There is resistance. So a breakout from these candles will give you a shot at this, but it is a trade for me. A, a dip into here should have buyers against this wick, this wick, and these. So somewhere in here, there should be a bid. Um, I wouldn't short it, that's for sure. Dips are viable. Inside the zone, there's a tradable dip. I think if you need to trade it, you need to be uh, into smaller time frames, like 30-minute charts. Now you have actionable lines like this one. That's a fail. So if, if on Monday it rallies to here, don't buy calls or don't buy it for a trade until it breaks up, breaks out from it. And odd, odds are it gets to it, it fails, comes back and breaks out from it into a, an inverse head and shoulders. As a trade, it is doable. So action points on Monday, this. Lose that, you're going to have this. Action point on Monday, there's going to be resistance here comes back here, there's gonna be a resistance here. And then if they do this, now you have some sort of a tradable head and inverse head and shoulders, like one shoulder, one head, and then one shoulder that draws on Monday. And then you can see them come up, retest it, and then try to go to here. Here, I would get out. That's a trade, not an investment. So action points, one, two. That is a 30 minute chart on Lucid. All right, two more. Are you guys in my room? Because these are tickers from my room. Look at the look at the list I just posted up there. Somebody repost it, please. The uh, that link that says uh, shortened the Bitly link is um, that one is it's got all these links. You can click on them. So if I don't answer you, your ticker is in there most likely. All right, I'm going to pick another one. LUV. Okay, I'll pick LUV and Rivian. Okay, I'll do apps, Kyle. Uh, LUV. If I were to invest in an airline, that would be it. Guess what? Anybody know why? Okay, so uh, this airline was the no frills airline. It was built on uh, a, 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 to operate on lean margins. So it's, it's kind of like Walmart. So the fact that they're having trouble now, and they're shooting themselves in the foot because of the um, mandates with, uh, I heard Delta is penalizing their own people for not being vaccinated, like financially penalizing them, like $200 a month or something. I mean, how ridiculous is that? I would quit out of moral reasons, you know, not because of the vaccine or anything. All right, so clearly the world stopped. That's an extreme. That's an extreme. Somewhere in the middle lies the truth. And that's where it is. So that's one statement. It gave back half the rally. Uh, the, oddly enough, see that orange, that red line thing? Uh, that here was the termination of a harmonics. And then this, that's when the machines will start looking for an entry point to short it and retrace the Fibonacci levels down. So now it's falling into support. Look at this candle here, this candle here. So that is your candle right there. Uh, November 9th, the edges of that candle are your box for this week, the low and the high. So you don't want to lose the low. That's your entry point with a tight stop. So if it gets to 41, 42, I would consider a long with a tight stop. What is a tight stop? I set an amount. 
if I lose X percent or X dollars, I'm out regardless. Why am I looking to get long? Because of all of this, that looks like pretty good cluster. I think there are some buyers lurking in here. So I don't know if they're going to do this without a lockdown um, headline. So that's on love. And if it pops into 52, I would get out because of this candle. I would re-engage long above it. Above 56.4, I would take another long because it's going to pop into here. Repeat the process up here. I think it will fail up here, but if I will retake longs above that. Now, if I'm buying it for an investment, this is a decent starting point. Definitely, please, most definitely not all in. Absolutely not. The fundamentals are still in shambles for airlines. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, apps. I said apps and Rivian. Okay, this is falling into a prior big base. Now, it closed. Is that an exact close of that other day? Let's see. This is a weekly chart. So this is a whole week worth of data. So 48.85 on that week, 48.64. They're pennies away from the close in the middle of August. So the assumption would be that it holds. So if I took longs here, I must stop if the low fails from last week. That's the trader mentality. If I'm investing in apps for the long term, first of all, it was just like miles lower. So consider that fact. I, I don't know much about the company. The PL looks decent, but it's still too small. So be careful assuming that, oh, this is a bottom. It's not. It's a tradable bottom, which means I have to stop out. So if you want a lower, mar bigger margin, this candle. You don't want to lose this. It has support here, but it's wonky. It's too fast, but it's weeks and weeks and weeks. So it is a tradable bottom, but stop out. Or if it's an investment, like 20% of it or 30% of it, not all of it. You're saying, but I'm going to miss out. So what? Better than being stuck in a 50, 60% loss. That's apps. Rivian. So I, I live in Southern California, which is uh, the... Tesla land, really. Um, and if you drive around Newport Beach, you see Rivians and they are sharp. So they command attention. I like them. So I'm optimistic. Trading wise, it is a trade so far because, again, it doesn't have a PL, substantial PL to uh, um, defend it. So most of the price is based on faith. Faith disappears pretty quickly. So if I take a long, I should stop out either right away or when it loses the prior low. If I wished I owned it at the IPO, there's my opportunity. It's below the first day. Uh, so this is a two-hour chart. If I wanted more information, if I go to a one-hour chart. So I can tell you that pops into 112 will be sold. Pops into 120, 118 will be sold, meaning they will find sellers. So it's resistance. This candle here is going to be resistance, but that's also the trigger to pop. So a big slog going back up, very ginger, very delicate support, not strong at all. But look, tick, 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 a few hours, you lose that, whoop, little dip lower. And you lose that, open air. You don't know what's below. Stop out. Re-engage lower. This is the type of stock where if you are looking to pay out of pocket to buy 100 shares right now, I would suggest you go out and learn how to sell puts I would suggest you join me just for that purpose because then you can get paid for getting long at 80. What did he just say? Yes, you collect money today, no money out of pocket to get long at 80. How cool is that? All right, folks, I'm out of energy. The wife is probably yelling at me back there. No, she's super nice. Roblox, uh, I don't know. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> um, here, I'll show you the chart. I just can't speak to it. The lines are on there. Hi, right, folks. Rodrigo, I appreciate you. Are you in there? Are you out having lunch? Are you eating Chick-fil-A? No, it's Sunday. No Chick-fil-A. Hey, what's up, Nick? No, man. It's just uh, <laughs> going over the session here, man. Pen and paper, guys. Pen and paper. You already yeah. know. So, good session. Know. Good session here. You're welcome, folks. Yeah, Nick. I appreciate it. I mean, I got the phone call. Hey, can you help us out? I, I love it. Oh, Robert saying, I'd love to join. I truly, however, just don't know that much about options. Man, don't worry. That's Nick's the reason to join. Nick's Robert, got your back. That, that's the reason to join. Hey, 
it, wait, wait, think about it this way. Stop before you leave. I, I, you were desperate giving me tickers, right? Desperate is the wrong word. You were, you wanted me to cover the tickers. You have me all year. How much is that worth? 50 bucks a month, whatever that price is. I mean, it was a hundred dollars a month. I mean, what, whatever it is, it's just, it's, it's worth some. I mean, it's a no-brainer for me. If this information is 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 good for you, you're getting all the rest for free, and it's a whole bunch of education. You say you don't know anything about options. What if I tell you I'll feed you one video a day until you learn options, or one video a week, and you come back to me with questions all week? I will answer all of them. I promise. Yeah, and if you have questions about your trades, a lot of people yes. do that. They just come in and ask Nick, "What do you think about this?" I and just I chatted for twenty five minutes earlier, just before I hopped on this call. I actually said, "Frank, I got to go. I'm going into a webinar." <laughs> so he's worried about puts he sold in uh, a certain stock. So yeah, and uh, I'm going to stay here for a couple of minutes once Nick heads out, just to answer questions on the chat room. If you guys have any. Uh, on the deal of the Black Friday special that we are extending till today. All right, folks, I'm going to bow out. I appreciate I hope I see you in there. I promise you value. And uh, Benzinga promises you your money back if you don't like it. Uh, my job is to keep you liking it. And we do good work. I promise you that the people in the chat room are nice. Not one jerk. Well, except no, I'm just kidding. There's not one jerk. Um, so I sometimes we get heated debates, but everybody's respectful in the end. Uh, we do good work. Trading in groups. Find a group to trade in. If not mine, find a good one. You make fewer mistakes. All, All right. right. Peace yeah. out. All right, Nick. Later. All right, guys. So I'm showing y'all the chat room with Nick. So this is the, uh, we just started. Well, we didn't start it, but we already have a new uh, chat out that's going to be out within one or two weeks. Uh, go ahead and put any questions you guys have in the chat so I can go over them really quickly. If you have questions on Nick's uh, strategy, what he's doing, or anything here with the chat room for Nick. Um, Eve, what's up? Yes. So typically, it, like the normal price is 6000 but we have a Black Friday deal where you basically get it for like $12.97. You keep that. It's a long-term forever discount. So as you renew, you're locked into that, even if the price changes. So that 78% off is for life. And you know, every year, it'll be the same price. Uh, we only have yearly for that, Eve. What's up? Yo, Chelly, what's going on? What's up, people? How y'all doing? Um, how do you use the Wix to determine? Yeah, Samuel, that would be a great question for Nick because he looks at everything from that options perspective and um, the trading side of it. His analysis is very in-depth, as you can see. And that was really just a sneak peek. But here's the video from Sunday. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Crashing this company. This is Sunday. It was okay, before was you guys joined in here. DocuSign. For Okay, I can wait out another few ticks. Like 129 tickers. You want trade ideas? There so, you go. Like, I don't know what, um, what, what, like. Offer? That's a, put <laughs> that's a lot. And that doesn't even count the other trade. Those are the trade ideas from the chat, like where everybody's pitching in, putting their, their uh, tickers. Um, but that's not, the, you know, like Nick is posting other trade ideas right here. Like, you know, video three, Disney, Roku, Boeing, Zoom detail plus a detailed lesson on selling options guys this is really good education because it's applicable to the actual trade and that's really good because you're it's not like the theory of like you know wonderland this is how it should be in xyz situation this is real life applicable education that you can bank on as well so you get you get all that right here nvidia amd intel taiwan semi qualcomm hamat so these are all like even more trade ideas. There's like full of trade ideas from Nick. All of these are long 20 minute videos that he does for every trade. This is a 15 minute trade. Hey folks, Nick here on Friday, 12, three, a very interesting day today. I mean, this is pretty normal. This is what we do in the chat guys. Uh, Babu laptop. Uh, the laptop is included as a courtesy. It's a gift. Um, I mean, if you know, so it's, it's gonna, it's included with the black Friday special. 
Ryan, I am in this TC group. Would it make sense for me to join? Of course, man. Like, I mean, if it's not Nick Shaheen, it, it's, I know Nick from like a couple of years where he's been doing this and the man's on point. Uh, his charts are very well detailed. It gives you a better perspective on the market. Like, don't think that you're an options trader just because you're buying calls and puts and you think, you know, the Greeks that that's really, there's a lot more into it. It's obviously hard, impossible to like pack all the stuff here in like 30 minutes. But in the chat room, Nick does a great job of breaking it down. Every single trade, giving you the education, like I was showing you, um, you know, charts, trade setups, feedback on your trades and strategies. You know, like some people go to Reddit to find, you know, like what is it, like option education. And, you know, you definitely got to cut that out. You, you got to follow people that like have successfully done it, verified traders, 90% win rate, decades in the game. And we've been working with Nick for about 10 years, 12 years, something like that. So um, he's been doing this stuff for quite some time. People like it. And also you can have a regular conversation about options. You know, it's no, no pressure. Everybody's there to learn. Everybody's there to like make money as well. So it's a great community. So if you're starting, if you really are starting to learn about options. If you want to get your, your feet wet, you have to do it with the right community. If you do it with the wrong community, you're just going to get hurt. You're going to find yourself in like a pump and dump scheme and, you know, these pump and dump chat rooms. Everybody in here is a verified trader, a real human being. Like Faustus, I know Faustus, I know Rami. Supreme B, Vet Judy, EWG Keys, I know him, Edward. I mean, these are all like cool people here that just, you know, got in and, and they've been doing great with the chat. They love, they learn from Nick all the time. And that's how you have to be like a sponge, you, you know, sponge. If you can't just like think, you know, it all, you have to always have an open mind and like what's going on with the markets. Nobody knows. Nobody has a clue what's going on right now, but 20 years of experience in the game with Nick, you will be able to navigate the markets. You will be able to find trade ideas in between the volatility. Don't just sit on the sidelines right? Actually profit from the volatility, not just when stocks go up. Uh, Babu, yeah. So the price is the same with the laptop or without it. Uh, David's asking how often does he put these videos? He puts them out all the time, man. Like, I'm, like I was showing you, he just put one that he did 127 tickers. Okay. Sunday review, 127 tickers. That was from today, like right before he joined the this uh, workshop we were doing today. So this is all day going on back and forth, back and forth. Somebody has questions about this, about a specific option concept or whatever it is. Nick, you know, addresses it immediately. Everybody gets their questions answered. You know, he's having, you're having fun in the chat there. You know, you're making a friend, you're learning, like you're making money. It's a cool, it's a cool environment, to be honest. James, hey, what's up, James? Okay. All right, guys. Um, let's see what other questions you guys have. So, uh, David, to answer your questions in a summary, like he does that all the time on a daily basis. He's putting out videos with education, with trade ideas, trade ideas, plus education, and also direct communication. So it's a three-way street here. You talk to Nick about your needs or what you're, you know, whatever it is that you have on your mind that you want to bounce off of him or, you know, whatever it is then Nick responds to you, but you also communicate with the other chat members. So everybody is like, you know, it's like a big community. Everybody helps each other out. If it's a simple question, anybody can answer it in the chat. You know, like, what is the meaning of this? Or what is the meaning of that? Um, if it's trade specific, Nick, Nick is like on point every single day. He's working on Sundays as well, if you see that. And he does this pretty often. Every Sunday, he has a call with his chat members, guys. uh Kaluth last week okay yeah so you had some losses okay well i mean it, it's it's never i mean it, the best time to join the chat room was when it started but you still can benefit from joining now instead of waiting until you know to see if maybe you get it back or not i talked to a lot of a lot of traders thousands of traders around the world and i can tell you that it's always a similar experience where you know you you start revenge trading and then on top of that, you know, you start making riskier bets and, you know, you, you could blow up your account in a matter of like seconds and minutes, you know, from personal experience, I've blown up my account twice 
Okay. It's not fun. It's not, it's not cool. So you definitely want to be careful, but nobody's going to teach you this stuff. You only learn it, you know, the rough way. Hopefully you don't, hopefully you join the chat room, you get the education from Nick, you start doing things the right way. You know, options is not, it's not, I mean, it could be simple, right? Robin hood makes it so simple, but there still is a lot of thought process that goes behind being successful in options as a trader or a little bit longer positions as well with credit puts. So you're not trading, you know, the day to day. So, uh, Minak, Minak is asking at what price will I get the membership next year? If I take membership at 78 discount it this year. So if you sign up today with the black Friday special, this will be a permanent lifetime discount. So that means that next year you will pay the same price. It won't go higher regardless of what happens to the price. And I can tell you in around February, prices are going to go up like around mid February. So it's already in the books. So you might as well join now and lock in this rate guys. And, and Kat, uh, Kaluth, I would say, you know, give it a shot. Seven days money back guarantee. You, it really doesn't hurt. It only helps quite honestly. Like it's only, this is only meant to help you as a trader to become a more successful trader and learn if, depending where you are. Cause somebody else might be in a different stage of their options trading. Somebody else might be struggling with something different in their options trading, like maybe getting too early or selling too late, not knowing when to book. So regardless of where you're at, Nick is, is the best way to start because he will mold you up from where you are and show you the responsible way of trading options. It's not all supposed to be calls and puts guys. There's a lot of different things you can do. They're a lot safer. You have higher probabilities of success. You're not flipping the coin. You're not hoping for a rally, like Nick said. So it's called trading with a strategy, trading with a plan. It's like what we do in the chat every day. Uh, Robert's asking if I know Nick's win rate. Yes, 90% win rate. When you book, you know, some people like to book at 20, 30, 40. We're not really looking for like um, home runs or anything like that. We're not trying to risk the house or, or go all in or do YOLO plays. You know, when Nick says catch the falling knife, that's very specific and it's very measured. And it's with a, with a, with a partial amount of the account. This, these things are almost implied, but if you have questions, you, questions, you should always ask, um, you know, so the majority of, of the trades that we do are credit put spreads. They're a lot safer. You're still bullish. Um, much better way to play this play options, to be honest. You're not, you don't have to worry about that extreme volatility of being down 30% on your portfolio in like 20 minutes. Um, you know, it's just a very, it's very intense, you know? <laughs> so if you want to play options and you don't want to play it that intense, you know, Nick is a great choice for that. And he also has, you know, certain trades that you could play with calls and puts, uh, like Tesla. We all bought calls in the chat room when it ripped to, from like 500 to like 600 around that. So, um, big trades always come, but it, we don't force them, right? We're not trying to force trades. We want the markets to tell us what to do. So Robert, that's your answer with the, uh, with the win rate. 90% with a seven day money back. Like there's people that have made their money the same day. Honestly, from the people that like email me, I just had somebody text me that he <laughs> thanks for, you know, the stuff in the chat room. It's helped him a lot. So people are pretty happy with that. Uh, David's asking, so the chat is not monitored daily then, or does he have specific times when he's available? He's there all day, man. He's there there on a Sunday. Like he's there today. He was there today. He put a video I mean, even the market is closed today, right? So that tells you how much Nick cares about you guys. So he's there in the morning. He, um, he's basically putting a game plan very early in the morning, pre-market, all right, pre-market. And that gives you like a general sense of where, where his mind is, where, where we are, right? And then you get a midday recap, all right? You see this in the screen? This is a midday recap. Let's just briefly go over this. The day is still ugly, but I think we are making more sense of we're making more sense of than most everyone else. Never seen such an idiotic move to a headline like what happened today this morning. This drop here is not from fear or fear of rate hikes or inflation, or else the US dollar would not be in red in the TLT. So I mean, this is some deep analysis, guys. This is like real market analysis. And this is a, a freaking like market update, like a midday update. So you're getting a lot. So within the education, within the trade, within the trading day that we go, 
you get all of these little pieces and bits of solid financial education, right? Now you learned about the relationship between the TLT and rates, right? If you didn't know that already, and then you'll see how Nick trades that. There's so many golden nuggets here, guys. Um, you just have to look. That's it. So Nick is here all day in the morning. He's there after hours as well, David. He's there on Sundays. He's answering questions like even on Saturdays. So, but if you want to catch him for sure, like obviously, you know, trading hours, right? But he's there, you know, before and after. Francis is saying just subscribed. Nice, nice, Francis. Um, well, we got something here for you, all right? Francis, welcome to the family. Let's go. Let's go. Francis, I love it. That's great. Great education here. Um, oh, let me take a look. Let me take a quick look, Francis. Hold up. All right. Let's go over here. A couple more questions. Francis, make sure you, you join tomorrow in the morning um, so that you can go and look at the game plan. For the morning the morning uh, game plan with nick it's amazing he's gonna chop it down for you and he remember nick is all nick is up from like two in the morning three in the morning because he's in california the market's open early there so he's basically already looking at futures all day prior doing notes like this is his life okay and you're just along for the ride you're along there um to enjoy it okay francis yeah you have successfully signed up there for sure also, I want to give a shout out here to Simon, another new member of the family here. Good stuff. Good stuff, guys. Join in now. You can go in and chat with Nick. Um, TJ, uh, you can email me. Maybe we can work something out uh, like, you know, half and half, something like that. Uh, let me let me put the contact there. Ryan. Send me an email, Ryan, if you can. Um, all right, let's see. Ryan, if you can, just join. Send me an email and just let me know that you joined so that I can go ahead and, and do that thing for you, okay? Robert saying, that's true. I was getting lucky for so long that I kept going more and more until I went all in and lost 25%, 27% of my savings. Not worried, okay? Yes, you got carried away. Yeah, I mean, you got to keep it in mind, dude. This is the back of your head. It's your subconscious. You don't control it. It controls you until you actually control, start controlling it, right? Your conscious mind needs to control your subconscious mind. Otherwise, you're just going to fall into that. It, it happens to me. Like, it happens to a lot of people. You know, we all think this is the one last lucky shot or, you know, this is it. You know, this is that one trade. Um, <laughs> and the market eats, off, you know, lives off that, you know, people like doing that kind of that, that's the thing like with fear and greed like it's it's legitimately what it is you know taking over so you have to be disciplined that's how you combat that but that's mental stuff that's not trading stuff that's like you know you having willpower and all that stuff so but if you learn it robert you know and like the tough way kind of like you and i did you know taking losses and stuff like that eventually it sticks right eventually it sticks because some people have lost that i've spoken with two three four hundred thousand dollars and you know could have saved probably all, if not most of it, by just taking, joining a, a great community of options instead of trying to wing it on his own. So it's the community, it's Nick, it's everybody that's there. It's the technology there with the new chat room we're going to put in. You can direct message Nick in case you're shy and you don't want nobody to read your question. And you, you have a personal question like, hey, Nick, look, I'm down 10 grand or I'm down this or whatever. Um, you know, you can always have a direct conversation with Nick there. Um, TJ, the offer, um, well today at midnight, but the free laptop is probably not going to be there by midnight. So if you want to go ahead and wait, that's, you know, it's up to you, but if you don't see a laptop by that point, you know, we can't do anything. If you see a laptop on the checkout, that means you get it, the laptop, uh, Francis, how and when the laptop will ship after the seven days, money back guarantee, make sure you, if you sign up guys, you will get an email. that says like action delivery, action required, something like that laptop something and then just open the email it's going to have a form you click on it you put the email um your email that you signed up with your address and then after the seven day money back guarantee we send that out to you francis i seem to be able to see everything that's the kind of info i need i love it i mean it's great if i wouldn't be so busy doing this like i would just be reading the chat room all day 
because it's so much information and it's not just about options. Like we just learned so many things about the market in general and how it impacts equities. So the knowledge is all around you. It's just like, are you open to see it? And, you know, do you want to learn from somebody who's experienced and has been doing it for decades? Or do you just want to spend 20 years hoping to get there? You know, some things you kind of have to, you know, you have to learn from people that have done it. That's just how it is. Ryan, uh, send me an email. Send me an email so we can go over that. Um, does anybody have any more questions here on the chat room, guys? Let me know if you have any questions. It was a great session. I had fun. I hope you guys did. You learned a lot. I learned a lot. I learned a couple of things with Nick. Every time I do these things, I learn something. I know you guys do. You must learn. There's no way you saw this whole thing and didn't learn one thing. There's no way. Uh, <laughs> so, it, you know, in the chat room, it's like all day pretty much. So this is all the conversation. Kathy, Sterlinga, Red, Smokey, Nick. It's always the usual suspects there. All right, Francis. Francis says, thank you. Great session. Exceeded my expectation. It was a great session. Absolutely. I, I learned a lot. I'm glad you guys had fun. So if there's no further questions, I guess we're going to drop it here, guys. Thanks for joining. Thanks for being us with, here uh, today with us at Benzinga. We love your company. We, uh, we definitely appreciate you taking the time to focus on your education, to focus on what matters, you know, and, and really doing the work to becoming a better trader. It's not overnight, but we're here and we're going to continue helping you guys. You know, even if it's here on the sessions or if it's in the chat room or whatever it is, all this stuff is, is for one thing, and that's to help you become a more successful trader. So thanks for joining us today, guys. I hope you have a great evening. Enjoy the rest of the day. It's a beautiful Sunday. And um, if you have questions, email, call. I'm going to drop the link in the chats and I'll drop the link as well. The deal expires at midnight. And any questions, just reach out, guys. Thanks and have a good day. Thank <laughs> you.